Hello and welcome inside the USF Softball Stadium for another presentation of WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan Softball. I'm Alex Drain, joined by Charlie Brigham here for game number three of Michigan's 2020 softball season as the Wolverines get ready to take on the Florida Gators here live in Tampa, Florida. As always, a highly attended matchup. It is a packed house here in Tampa. We're just about a minute away from first pitch. Yeah, it's going to be a great day, Alex. Two very good games lined up for the Michigan Wolverines. You know, great day yesterday coming out 2-0 with wins over Georgia State and then Illinois State later in the day. Going to look to keep that momentum. Alex DiRocco back on the bump for the Wolverines. Going to look to continue that absolutely dominant performance that she posted yesterday. Michigan is the away team, so they will come up to hit first. And we are just moments away from getting this one underway. Michigan now 2-0 on their season. Florida 2-0 as well. They edged Illinois State last night in a closer game of a 4-1 score and then hung on to beat Fresno State 6-4 in a game that got a little hairy in the bottom of the seventh, but the Gators were able to claim victory. And here we go. First pitch is away, and it is taken a little down and outside. Lexi Blair stands in there. Michigan wearing the road white uniforms. Florida wearing a very odd gray and orange color as the second pitch rides up high. Almost sort of looks like University of Tennessee. Yeah, a little bit with the gray and orange going on. A little notable lineup change for the Wolverines. Lexi Blair does stay in her leadoff spot. But Juju Jimenez coming in at the number two. Blair takes the 2-0 for a strike. Liz Hammerschmidt behind home plate. She's always a usual in NCAA softball umpiring crews. And 2-1, the wind up and the pitch. Blair takes it for a strike, just a tad on the inner edge of the plate. Natalie Lugo, the pitcher for Florida today, she had to throw about 15 pitches to close out the game in the seventh that concluded about 30 minutes ago. 2-2 Two -two count, Lugo winds up. Blair hits this one high into the sky in left field, moving over towards the line and making the catch is Cheyenne Lindsay for the first out. Yeah, that one coming off her bat looked like it might have had the distance to get out, but just barely getting to the warning track. Opposite field, tough tough pitch to hit, really. So that'll bring up the number two hitter, Julia Jimenez, wearing number 17, waiting on the full lineups. The staff feed has not been updated yet. We know Michigan's lineup, but Florida, we're still waiting on the full group. We know Lugo's in the circle there, and first pitch to Jimenez is taken a little down and in. Yeah, Jimenez, what a hot start to her freshman season yesterday. Coming out on both sides of the ball, just playing very well. Really a couple of dramatic plays in the game against Illinois State, especially she takes a called strike one and one, gunned out a runner at the plate on a relay throw from the outfield, and then had the game-winning double in the fifth inning. Put Michigan up 5-4 to four in the lead. They eventually won by 1-1 one, one count. Jimenez swings, hits this one high in the air, down the left field line, but that one is going to arc foul. It was well over the fence, but could not tuck it inside the pole as she was just a little out in front of it. Jimenez got absolutely all of that one. That one was a no-doubter if, if it did stay fair. rather, but Like you said, did hook foul at the very last second. I'm going to look to tune up any pitch she can get like that. Now the count is 1-2. Jimenez stands out of the batter's box, one out in the top of the first. No score between Michigan and Florida. It'd be Jimenez and then Allen here in this first inning. The wind up, the one, two, the little high and outside, two and two. So a pretty, pretty patient approach for Michigan yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. They were really, really just patient in the box. They were really, uh, you know, they just knew what they wanted to do with the ball whenever they got it. 2-2 coming, she swings, hits this one over to second base, gloved and a sidearm flip by Adams for the out. And two gone in the top of the first. Yeah, Jimenez probably a little frustrated with that one. You know, ground ball after she did nuke that ball over the left field fence that just happened to go foul. But you know, those two pitches, or those two at bats rather, have got to be sitting in the back of Natalie Lugo's mind right now. You know, that deep fly ball towards left field uh, from Lexi Blair to start off, and then Jimenez, like we just said, hitting that ball very deep foul as well. So Lou Allen stands in. She takes a ball high. Lou had a two-run home run in the first game yesterday against Georgia State. Has looked pretty strong here to begin 
this 2020 season. Lugo has fallen behind the hitters early on in this first inning. She winds up, delivers a 1-0, swing and a high pop-up. It will get out of play and bounces off the roof above our heads. Florida defense, as we finally got the stat sheet updated, it's Lindsey, Carraway, and Matthews left to right in the outfield. Eccles, Reynoso, Hannah Adams, and Kendall Lindemann left to right in the infield. Roberts, the catcher, and Lugo in the circle. One and one the count. Lugo winds up, delivers that pitch a little low. Two and one. I think we talk about with Natalie Lugo is, of course, last season she was the number two and has been that for her first two seasons in Gainesville behind Kelly Barnhill. Now it is her time to be the ace of this Gator staff. 2-1 on the way, that one a little, ooh, late strike call there. Yeah, we saw a lot of that in that second game yesterday. Umpires just waiting, kind of, you know, thinking about what they wanted to call, it seemed like. But Lou Ellen, not too happy with that one. She did lay off, thought it was a ball, but she's gonna look to drive this 2-2 pitch coming up. Lugo winds up the pitch, and Allen out in front of it, and she spanks it foul. It actually nestles itself between the netting and falls down into the Michigan dugout. That one kind of ricocheted off the light post, it looked like. The count remains two and two. Sixth pitch of the at-bat. Lugo winds up and delivers. Lou swings and lines this one into center field. It will drop right in front of the center fielder, Carraway, for a two-out single. Great piece of hitting there by Lou Allen. Got her pitch. Drove it right back up the middle. So Michigan gets a two-out base runner, and now that will bring Taylor Bump to the plate. Or sorry, Morgan Overright is Taylor Bump on deck. The batting order for Michigan, we haven't gone through it yet. Blair Jimenez, Allen, Overright is Bump, Carson, Hoganrod, Thais Gonzalez, and then Natalia Rodriguez. Roberts has gone out there to talk to Lugo in the circle. Jordan Roberts, the senior catcher, working with the first-time ace pitcher, in Lugo, and Lugo has continued Kelly Barnhill's tradition of wearing the sunflower in the ponytail. A few of the players doing that, most just wearing the visors. First pitch to Overrightis is a called strike on the outside edge. As first inning is always important as hitters, you know, establishing that strike zone on both sides, the defensive and offensive end, coming back to the dugout after each at bat, letting your teammates know what you saw. 0-1 count over right as takes it a little bit high. Game time temperature here in Tampa, Florida, 69 degrees, but feels like 70. Winds east, northeast at seven miles an hour. A little bit lighter winds than we saw yesterday. 1-1 coming, over right as smacks this one right back up the middle, a base hit. And now Michigan's got two ducks on the pond with two outs here in the top of the first. Nice hit there by over right as. Not too much power behind it, but fell right in no man's land, right over second base. Nobody's going to get to that ball. And now with Taylor Bump coming to the plate, two on and two outs. Michigan's in an interesting position where it's going to take a pretty good single to bring Lou Allen home from second to home. She'll be off on contact, but that is the liability of having her on the base pass far too early to even toy around with going into your bench trying to pinch run. But an early opportunity for Michigan to get an early lead, and there's a ball high to Bump. Yeah, we do get to experience a lot more of the energy from Michigan's dugout today as they are right below us. They're on the third base side, uh, whereas all day yesterday they were on the first base side, but packed stadium all the way around. 1-0 count, the wind up and the pitch bump out in front of it, one and one. This is a capacity crowd here. Yeah, even got some fans sitting in the grass behind the right field wall in the outfield. That's not a bad spot because they're gonna get shaded within probably about an hour. 1-1 one, one to Taylor Bump is a little inside, 2-1. This stadium at USF has a capacity listed at 1,500, but I'm not exactly sure how they come up with that number because there's a lot of standing room throughout this stadium, including up here on the Donaldson deck in the concourse, a small set of bleachers in the outfield. 2-1 to Bump is down in the dirt, 3-1 the count. And then there's an area in right field, as you mentioned, where fans can come and bring folding chairs and sit in the grass beyond the right field fence. Three and one the count on Taylor Bump, but it is a packed crowd here today. Ball in the glove, the wind up, the three one coming is a little high, and Taylor Bump draws a walk, and now, after it was no on and two outs, it is now bases loaded, and two outs for the Michigan catcher, Hannah Carson, and Roberts will go out there to try and calm down Lugo. This is gonna be a huge at-bat for Carson, just the Wolverines in general. 
Florida coming in ranked as number seven in the country. We know that they're a solid softball team. Any lead you can get early is going to be huge against a good team like Florida. Well, especially you look at the last couple seasons Michigan played Florida. They could just never find consistent offense against Kelly Barnhill. I have to look it up. They had maybe one or two runs combined over the last two games against the Gators. Now's an opportunity to really put some runs on the board. And with Overitis on second, you really do have a second to home opportunity that could score two runs on a single. Carson, the lefty hitter against Lugo, the righty. Watches the first pitch sail in for a strike. I haven't seen too much off-speed stuff from Lugo so far. It's been mostly fastballs. If you're a Michigan hitter, you're going to look to tune that one up as soon as you can get one close. 0-1 oh the count. Lugo checks the wristband in a stressful situation here early on. The wind up the 0-1, oh Carson out in front of it, and she smacks it foul now. Lugo's ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh Plate protection time for Hannah Carson. Michigan cannot afford to leave runners stranded on base in this game. They're going to need to capitalize on every opportunity they get, especially with two runners in scoring position. Lugo toes the rubber, looks at the wristband. Ball in the glove, the windup, the 0-2 is high. We've seen nice place discipline all weekend long so far here, stemming into the third game of the Tampa tournament. Michigan has not been off balance much at all. Seeing the pitch as well, and they've done that here against Lugo thus far. One and two, the count. The wind up, the pitch, down and away. Nice take from Carson. Good job by Carson, working away back to a pretty much even count here. Two, two, advantage still is to Lugo, but a lot more pressure on Lugo as she doesn't have those four balls to work with. No score, top of the first, bases loaded, two outs for the Wolverines. The 2-2, Carson swings, hits this one, into right field, a base hit. One run will score, and the ball is dropped by the right fielder. Two runs will score. Matthews couldn't pick it up cleanly. Hannah Carson delivers, and Michigan takes an early 2-0 lead over the Gators. That's a great at-bat by Hannah Carson. Got down in the 0-2 hole early, but fought her way back to 2-2. Made it so Lugo had to come to her, and that Lugo was no longer in control. She got her pitch and drove it. Great piece of hitting. That will give her two RBIs on that single. The drop ball in the outfield by Matthews is not an error. It, the only thing it really did was prevented a play at the plate. I think Michigan would have scored two anyway. It would have been close, though. Instead, no throw, run score standing up. Michigan in a 2 nothing advantage right now, but they still have two runners on and two outs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if anything, that misplay of that ball might have hurt Michigan. Uh, runners still stuck on first and second. If a throw might have made it yeah. home. Runners might have been able to advance, but yeah, I'm pretty. Sh I think it's pretty certain that both runners would have scored there, no matter what. And so now a, a conversation already in the circle with the Gator coaching staff. Taylor Bump standing on second, and Hannah Carson down there at first. Two runs in, and Michigan has a two nothing lead here, early on at the top of the first in Tampa, and the Michigan crowd really into it. The dugout doing the go, and the fans on the third base side doing the blue of the Go Blue chant. A lot of Michigan fans up here on the Donaldson deck to our right. And now Haley Hoganrod gets ready to stand in. She had a pretty nice day yesterday, especially in that first game where she was three for three. The wind up and the first pitch coming is a strike at the letters. Lugo comes back to find the strike zone right there. She's walked one in this inning and allowed three singles. And also a couple hard hit balls in the first two at bats that were recorded for outs. 0-1 on the way. Hogan Rod takes it a little, oh, on the inner edge. 0-2. A little yeah, bit strike. wider zone on that inner edge today. Yeah, strike zone's looking to be about a ball's width on either side. Uh, up and down, it seems pretty consistent, but yeah, hitters are going to have to crowd that plate a little bit, take away that outside pitch. 0-2 is high, and it's going to be an adjustment for Michigan now compared to that game yesterday where it was really squeezing on all edges. But you like to see that larger strike zone, make the hitters really swing. Yeah, exactly. It's more fun for the fans. It's not, no real game is fun when you just watch people get walked the entire time. One, two, Hoganrod hits this one hard into right field, backing up to the track, to the wall. It's off the base of the wall. One run scores. Two runs will score. Hoganrod will stop it second. Michigan leads 4 nothing. Michigan, two out rally. This has been fantastic. Four runs against a very good Florida team. Hoganrod, what a hit, opposite field. And Hoganrod will take off her protective gear and toss it to Carol Hutchins down there at third base. Michigan, after having no on and two outs in this inning, have now put together a really nice rally 
Single, single, walk, single, double. Four runs in, four hits on the board in the inning. Now Gonzalez is up. Michigan's dugout is hyped up right now. The energy level is outstanding. Thais Gonzalez at the plate. She takes the first pitch a little high and outside. And Natalie Lugo, now you gotta wonder about that pitch count. That was pitch 33 in just this first inning alone. She threw about 15 in the game earlier. But Florida really tore through their bullpen for that first game against Fresno State. 1-0 on the way, Hoganrod sees it, or sorry, Gonzalez sees it for a called strike. Hoganrod down there at second, taking small leads off the base. Infield playing straight up. Yeah, with Hoganrod's speed, there's no real reason to get a big lead. She's gonna score on anything in the outfield. 1-1 count, called strike on the outer edge. Now Lugo in a 1-2 count, she has consistently been able to get to two strikes. Allen singled in a 2-2 count, Carson singled in a 2-2 count. Now she's ahead one and two here. Can Lugo find that pitch and get out of the inning? The wind up, the delivery, check swing, outer edge, did she go? No, says the third base umpire, Terry Holt. Terry Holt's down there at third, Mike Burwell at first, and as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Liz Hammerschmidt behind the plate. Count evens at two apiece, Hoganrod on second, ready to run. Gonzalez swings, hits this one right to second base. It goes off the glove of the second baseman. They're gonna throw it home and sliding in safe. An error down there at second from Hannah Adams allows Thais Gonzalez to reach first. Hoganrod ahead first slide as the throw to the plate was not in time and it's five nothing Wolverines. I'm loving the aggression that Michigan has shown in the base pass so far this whole weekend. A ground ball that probably should have been an out Making it all the way from second base to home, you gotta love the attitude out of Haley Hoganrod. She knew she was scoring out of the box. She was going hard. And that fantastic slide to the back corner of the bag where the catcher couldn't get to her. And Natalia Rodriguez is gonna lay down a bunt. That's a really good one. Eccles to it. She throws it away down the first baseline. And going to third now is Thais Gonzalez. Rodriguez might have beaten that out regardless of the error, but now the defense is crumbling. And that's something I was wondering about with Carla Eccles down there at third, because she transferred from Michigan State in the offseason. And last year for Michigan State, she was exclusively a catcher. Now playing third base, Michigan tests her defense right there, and it does not withstand the test. And now the 10th hitter to the plate in this inning, it's going to be Lexi Blair. And again, still all of this coming with two outs. Yeah, absolutely. Michigan has really just turned it on here with two outs. Pressure's on, they don't care. This is a dangerous situation if I'm Florida. Two runners on, Lexi Blair hit a real deep ball to the opposite field last at bat. She's gonna be looking to swing for the fences again. That's now two errors on the board. They do indeed call that one in E5 on Eccles. The ball was a little bit wide of the first base in Lindemann, kinda an awkward stab down there from Lindemann and it trickled off her glove. Runners on the corners, two outs, five nothing Michigan. Top of the first, Lexi Blair at the plate. First pitch, it's a little high and outside. Lugo now is approaching 40 pitches. We don't have an exact number as the stat broadcast is yet to update, but this has been a long, long inning. Yeah, we should highlight what you just said. Runners on the corners. Gonzalez took third on that throw up, or on that botched throw on the bunt. 1-0 count. That pitch taken, a strike at the knees. Just another example of Michigan's very aggressive base running here. I'm loving it. Wolverines with a very nice 5-0 lead right now, but they've got an opportunity to add more, and Lexi Blair on paper, their best hitter at the plate. 1-1 one, one count, Lugo winds up and delivers that pitch, and caught in a rundown, potentially they're trying to double steal, throw back at first, not in time. Florida didn't bite, let Rodriguez go back, trying to will the Gators into a double steal situation where Rodriguez was gonna draw the attention and Gonzalez could scamper home from third. Regardless, the count is two and one. I love that play call by Hutch there. Be aggressive, why not? Go for it, you're up five nothing in the first inning. Two one is high, three and one, and Lugo's command now wavering. Yeah, Lugo just seems frazzled here. She got those two outs early, first two, or first two batters, and then from there it's just been downhill. It's a nice word choice right there, frazzled. Lexi Blair stands in the batter's box. 3-1 count, the windup. The pitch, she swings, hits this one to left field. Arcing towards the line, it will drop foul and go off the railing and into the bushes. So now the count runs full on Blair. She flew out to left field in her at bat to begin this inning. Similar spot right there, a little late on these swings, pushing them opposite field. Blair adjusts the uniform, steps back in the batter's box. 
peers in at the Hurler Lugo. 3-2 coming. She swings, lines this one into center field. On the run and making the play is Caraway. A ball that was a sinking liner into the gap. Caraway ran it down. But Michigan does their damage. They take a 5-0 lead into the bottom of the first, and this crowd is amped up. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you be? Michigan just took a 5-0 lead over a very good Florida team here in this first inning. Absolutely dominant performance at the plate. Lugo looked good early. She got uh, Lexi Blair and Jimenez off, or both out without letting either of them on. Two outs going into the meat of the order, really. And then Michigan just turned it on, got all the way back around. Just love to see that. And so to the bottom of the first, 5 nothing Michigan. And the interesting note about today's game is that Alex Duraco in the circle. She was magnificent yesterday. Megan Bobian labored throughout that game against Illinois State. As we were walking to the car yesterday, we were talking about whether Hutch would go to Starocco in this big game, and she has put confidence in the sophomore right-hander. She had 16 strikeouts, a career high in the first game against Georgia State, and then came in for, was it six more against Illinois State? Yeah. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't go back to Starocco. Absolutely dominant all day yesterday, like you said. And she didn't miss a beat. It wasn't just like she got hot against Georgia State and – you know, it wasn't like Georgia State was just a bad team and she was just dominating them. She came in against Illinois State, who was giving Michigan a run there in that game, and she came in just shut them right down, six strikeouts after a full game performance. She's going to be looking to go here and just double that number up. So Florida will send their offense out there. It'll be Adams, Lindemann, and Eccles to get things started. Then Roberts, Matthews, 4-5, Goddard, 6 Caraway seven, Reynoso eight, and Lindsay nine. And this Florida team, as we talked about on the season opening episode of East of the Rockies, our Michigan softball podcast, that Florida last year, not a good hitting team. Kelly Barnhill did a lot of the work. They hit just 260 as a team last season. And now in a five nothing hole, where is that offense gonna come from? They put up six against Fresno State and four against Illinois State. Haven't had a big outing thus far offensively, and they're going to need to come up with at least six runs already just to win <laughs> just to win this game, assuming Michigan doesn't score again. So they're going to need to make their mark offensively. Well, that's a very good point, Alex. Florida's going to need to look to everybody to contribute here. So Hannah Adams gets ready to lead off against Duraco in this Florida lineup really heavy at the top, and it's the depth in the lineup that's a bit of the issue. Duraco delivers the first pitch right down the pipe for a called strike. Adams wearing number one and leading off. Playing second base, she committed that costly error there in the first inning, trying to make up for it here at the plate. 0-1 count, Storaco spins the ball in the right hand, puts it in the glove, winds up, and that one fouled back. Already ahead is Storaco 0-2, and, and she did a good job of getting ahead of hitters yesterday. Yes, yeah, Storaco also throwing a little harder than yesterday. That one touched... 67 looks like she was ho uh, hovering around the mid-60s yesterday. 0-2 count. Straka would love a strikeout here to get that confidence rolling and get this start underway. Puts the ball in the glove. 0-2 up high. Lindemann on deck. This Florida lineup is really bolstered by players who Michigan is familiar with because they came from the Big Ten. Lindemann and Eccles, the two three hitters, both transfers from Big Ten schools. Adams, though, a bona fide Gator through and through. One, two, the count. Starocko winds up the pitch, swung and popped up in the infield, arcing towards the foul, and it will land off the netting right in front of us and roll down into the glove of Taylor Bump. Count stays one and two. I don't know how many times I had to say it yesterday, Alex, but I'll say it again. We don't need the net. I would have caught it. <laughs> So Straco checks the wristband, looks back in at Adams. The wind up and the pitch, that one up high again. Carson, really athletic job getting up there and grabbing it. Two and two the count. Straco just needs to take a little bit off. She's at 66 right now on that fastball. You can tell she's trying to overpower these hitters. Yeah, we saw that yesterday. Really, any time Straco missed, it was usually up in the zone. She didn't really miss left or right or even down, rather. 2-2, swinging a line drive into right field. That'll drop for a base hit right in front of Thais Gonzalez. And a nice job by Adams to get aboard. And a leadoff single will bring Lindemann to the plate. 
Yeah, it's an unfortunate uh, turn of events there. Uh, Sirocco went to the off speed but left it over the plate. A good hitter is going to take that one every time. And it's all about how you can shake off those base hits. And now Kendall Lindemann steps to the plate. Lindemann last year was really one of the only two hitters for Florida who was above 300. And she was well above it at that. A really dangerous hitter transferred from Minnesota before last season. Straco misses high there, 1-0. and And this is the danger. This is the top three hitters is where you have to navigate carefully. Straco looks at the wristband, spins the ball in the right hand. The wind up and the 1-0 on the way. A little down and in, 2-0. and Down in the Gator bullpen, a couple players warming up. Megan Bobian's been throwing in the Michigan bullpen. Not a serious bullpen, just looks like she's trying to stay warm down there. Yeah, Bobian just staying ready if we ever do need her in this game. We'll probably see her next game depending on how long Storocco goes. 2-0 on the way, Lindemann swings and misses. A lot of spin on that one and a weird looking swing as it was not close, 2-1. Nice block there by Carson, staving that pass ball. 2-1 count. Storocco continues to look over at Jen Brundage for the signals. 2-1, wind up. That's a called strike on the outside edge. Nice pitch, 2-2. Two and two. That's a big pitch there in a 2-1 count, getting that strike, avoiding that 3-1 count where you're going to have to go right at the hitter. Really now, Storocco can do whatever she wants. She can go back to her fastball. She can go off speed here. There's no danger really either way. Lendeman, a power hitter. Straco, you can tell, darting around. 2-2 two -two coming. That one up high. Carson again jumping out of the crouch to snare it. Yeah, there it is again. Great athleticism by Carson behind the plate to snag that one going up high. Like we said, every time Straco has missed, it seemed to be high. She's going to need to try to cut back on that. Count is full. Runner on first. No outs. 5 nothing. Wolverines on top trying to get a shutdown inning and go back up to hit. 3-2 coming. Lindemann just gets a piece. And... Hits it back to the screen. And yeah, Lindemann real late on that one, barely caught a piece. Bad break for Michigan there. Lindemann, 330 a year ago, but 15 home runs led the team in power by far. Eccles on deck, 3-2 count, runner on first. None out in the inning. And Straco will step off. Three and two, the count. Lindemann steps out, and now Carson will go out there, try to settle Storocco down. Yeah, I mean, it's not really too surprising, uh, you know, that home run stat. When you look at the way Lindemann swings, every swing, she's just looking to tank the ball. She's leaving nothing behind. She's worried less about contact and more about just driving the ball as hard as she can. 25 extra base hits a year ago. Three, two coming, swinging a high fly ball into center field. Coming on is Hoganrod. Lexi Blair calls for it in left. She makes the play easily. That ball went way high, but in the end turned out to be just a rainbow that landed medium depth in left field for the first out. Yeah, there's some heavy wind blowing in from left field back towards home plate. That might have had something to do with the pop up there, but I don't think it would have had the power to get out. Stepping up to the plate now is Charla Eccles. And Eccles, Eccles is a left-hander looking to do some damage. Eccles is a really dangerous hitter on Michigan State a year ago. Storocco winds up, first pitch coming. Is a little bit high, 1-0, and and Michigan fans may remember Ebony Eccles, Carla Eccles' sister who played four years at MSU, graduated in the spring, and then Carla decided that once her sister was gone, didn't want to stick around, she made the astute decision to leave a downtrodden program like Michigan State and transfer to a powerhouse in Florida, 1-0 on the way. Carla looks at it for a strike, one and one. That's a tough loss for MSU because Eccles was really their only bona fide returning hitter. And now they're going to have to rebuild that lineup. But Florida is happy to take whatever they can get. Yeah, absolutely. You love to get a player like Eccles. You, you hate to lose one if you're MSU. 1-1 one, one count, the wind up, the pitch, swing and a foul back to the screen. One and two, Storocco ahead in the count. Runner Adams still down there at first. Haven't seen much indication that she's going to be aggressive on the base paths right now. I think a good part of that 
it's not so much doubting it, doubt in herself, it's just uh, doubt that they'll be able to make it due to Carson behind the plate. Carson's looked very good back there. One and two the count. The wind up, the pitch. Caught her off balance, but it's in the dirt. And Eccles, of course, the one thing that's notable about her in this Florida lineup is that unlike her fellow teammates, she has some real experience against Storocco being a Big Ten transfer. Lindemann, a Big Ten transfer from Minnesota, left before Storocco arrived in college. So a bit of a sort of inside scouting from Eccles. 2-2 coming, swing and a ground ball, right back up the middle into center field. Runner will stop at second. And so two on and one out, another Really nice piece of hitting from Eccles puts two aboard. Yeah, good hustle there by Jimenez. Getting dirty, trying to get that ball. But a very good play by Hoganrod to come up clean with that ball and come up looking to throw. Holds the runner at second base, not allowing her to advance any farther. And now that'll bring up Jordan Roberts. And you look at Florida and their team last year, and the issue was that when they got runs, it you know was always coming from that top of the order. And you look at Michigan's game against Florida last year, Bobian really had great success against everybody in the lineup except for the top three. And that was what did the damage. And so anytime you face this lineup, it's about navigating through that top. Bobian surrendered 10 hits, or there was 10 hits against Michigan a year ago, all against Bobian. Five of them were from Amanda Lorenz, who's now graduated in Kendall Lindemann. Now you have Eccles in that spot that Lorenz was in. But again, it was really just the same types of players doing damage. Anytime that Straco is going to have to go through this top of the order, it's going to be a strenuous effort. Yeah, that's where it seems Michigan's had an advantage so far over the teams they've played. A lot of the teams we've played so far, their lineups have seemed very top-heavy, very loaded towards one side, whereas Michigan has looked very good all the way throughout. We saw the bottom of the order produce a lot late last or late yesterday. They're going to look to continue that. We saw that being able to get all the way through with two outs. First pitch to Jordan Roberts is a little outside. Roberts stands in there, a 262 hitter a year ago. Nine home runs for her. Lindemann, 15 to lead the team. Then Lorenz with 11. And then in third place was Roberts with nine. 1 0 coming. She swings and follows that one back. Took a big hack right there. Yeah, Roberts wanted all of that ball. Two hits in this inning, one out. Michigan up 5 nothing. Storocco trying to navigate through a first shutdown inning. Get the juices flowing. Put the offense back out there, but she's going to need to be careful here. 1-1 one, one count. There's a swing and a miss on a pitch way out of the zone up high. That's where Storocco really thrived yesterday, getting pitchers to chase high. We saw that a lot against Georgia State. Big reason why she had those 16 strikeouts. Going to look to do that here again against Florida. 1-2. The count, Storocco checks the wristband, spins the ball in the right hand. Roberts winds up, one, two coming. Just outside, that pitch looked pretty good. Yeah, I heard some oohs and ahs from the Michigan crowd here right down below us. Thought that clipped the outside corner, apparently not. It's gonna bring the count to two, two. Liz Hammerschmidt would not fire up the lawnmower right there. Looks like the outer edge to righties a little bit tighter, inner edge to righties a little bit wider. 2-2 two, two counts, Storocco winds up the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got her with the off-balance, spin-heavy pitch in the dirt. And now two outs in the inning. Good decision by Storocco to go back to that pitch. We saw Roberts miss on a changeup earlier in the count, just looked completely clueless. Going back to that one with two strikes was a very good decision. So now that'll bring up Jordan Matthews. Matthews, lefty hitter against the righty Storocco. Two on, two outs in the first. First pitch right down the pipe for strike one. A year ago, Matthews was not a starter, but she pinch hit for Alex Voss and got a single in that game. And Matthews, of course, famous in Florida softball lore for her dramatic two-out game-tying home run in the Super Regionals a couple years ago. 0-1 count, swing and a miss. Matthews, a big cut. She was just a 182 hitter a year ago, two homers in 110 at-bats. She struck out 36 times in 110 at-bats, a pretty high K rate. And now Storocco ahead 0-2, trying to get her second strikeout of the game and get out of this bottom of the first. Two on, two outs, 0-2 count. Storocco winds up the pitch, swinging a soft tapper right back to the circle. Storocco picks it up, throws across the diamond extension from Lou Allen, gets the out. Michigan surrenders a couple singles, but none on the board. They carry a five-run lead 
to the top of the second, and how big of an escape was that from Alex Duraco? That was huge. Runners on base with two outs. We saw that in that top half of the first inning from Florida on the defensive end, but Michigan was able to capitalize and eventually put out five runs batting through the order. Great job by Michigan not letting that happen and cutting Florida at the knees. And so Michigan will send the offense back up there. It'll be 2-3-4. Jimenez, Allen, and Overitis in the Michigan team. Quick pep talk out front of the dugout, and they will go back up to hit here in the top of the second. Florida's had a lot of pitchers warming up in the bullpen, and it does appear that we are going to have a pitching change. Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't if, you, if I was Florida. That's a good call. You know, we saw Lugo pitch in that game before this one, having to come in to close out that last game. And she just got pretty much tuned up in that first inning. You know, she threw a lot of pitches, over 40, and plus she got tuned up for five runs. Good decision by Florida to make the pitching change. It appears it'll be Danny Farley coming in for Florida in the circle. Right-handed pitcher, now a sophomore from Wellington, Florida. Pull up her stats from a year ago. Last year, she pitched in just 20 and two-thirds innings, allowed 25 hits, 10 walks. That's a pretty high whip, and a season ERA over four. So she's going to have to show something a little bit better here today to keep her team in this game. Because you feel like if Michigan goes up there, puts another you know four or five spot on the board, this gets really hairy really, really quickly. I mean, you'd love to see that as a Michigan fan, but obviously Florida are going to do everything they can to prevent that from happening. But we are coming up into the meat of Michigan's lineup. We can't really say that, though, because Michigan's lineup has been solid all the way through. We got the big guns coming up, Jimenez, Allen, and Overitis coming up. And then in that five slot, obviously, bump. Danny Farley has not pitched yet this season. Florida has used now four different pitchers they had. Trilasek started the game against Fresno State. Then Hightower came in. Then Lugo closed it out. And Jimenez hits this one hard on the first pitch into center field, moving over. But there to make the play is the center fielder, Carraway, right in front of the warning track for a quick first out. I love the aggression there by Julia Jimenez. New pitcher coming in. Just take the hack at the first pitch. You know she's going to try to throw it right down the middle for a strike to jump out to an early lead. You know it's coming. Why not jump on it? And Lugo went the distance last night. So this is Florida fans' first look at the pitcher, Danny Farley, this season as she delivers a strike to Lou Allen, 0-1. Allen got the rally going in that first inning, a two-out single, and then that just kept the revolving door moving as Michigan churned out five runs in the top of the first, five hits and a couple errors to help him out, pitch in the dirt, 1-1. One and, one. and this Florida crowd, very quiet right now. I'd say it's about probably 65-35 in favor of Gator fans. The majority wearing blue, the rest wearing orange. 1-1 one, one count. Allen takes that pitch for a strike. We see that larger inner half right there. Farley looking into the dugout. Allen practice swing and the 1-2 coming. She takes that one for a called strike three at the top of the zone. That was a kind of a late call. Michigan obviously not happy with that one. That's not something we've seen a lot from the Wolverines. Anytime we have struck out, we've gone down swinging. Not, not very common to see a Michigan Wolverine strikeout look in there, especially Lou Allen. And so now with two outs, Farley looking to just get a quick inning, send the offense back up there, has to face over Itis, and she takes a called strike. Yeah, Overitis with a very similar hit to Lou Allen last inning right back up the middle. 0-1 count. Overitis swings, hits this one into right field. A solid base hit there with two outs. And Overitis now two for two on the day. Patient seeing eye single under the glove of Hannah Adams and into right field will now bring Taylor Bump up with a runner on first and two outs. Yeah, the Florida defense might be having some flashbacks here. Two outs, Overitis gets on base with a nice single. Might just see a repeat of last inning, who knows. Wind up, first pitch to bump. It's taken a little high. 
one and zero. Michigan dugout trying to get some chance going here in the top of the second inning. Michigan five, Gators zero. Farley checks the wristband. 1-0 coming. Bump takes that one. A little down and in. 2-0. USF Bulls are down there warming up in the Lawler family batting facility. They've got a long way to go before they'll take the field after this game to take on Michigan. Wolverines playing back-to-back -back here on Saturday. 2-0 coming. Bump swings and misses on a fastball high. Yeah, that pitch might have been a little high, but I love the aggressiveness from Taylor Bump. A 2-0 count, that's a hitter's count. You know she's going to come at you with the fastball. Jump on that one. 2-1, and one. Farley checks the dugout, now checks the wristband. Down there at first over right, it's in a track stance. 2-1 coming, Bump aggressive again, and she fouls it back, arcing and out of play. That one's way out of the stadium. Some little kid might have a souvenir. 2-2 two and two the count. Stepping back on the rubber. Farley trying to get through this inning. Allowed a two-out single. Bump readies herself. 2-2 two -two coming. She swings and fouls this one between her own legs. Back to the screen. Michigan fans applauding. Bump continuing to fight and stay alive here in this at-bat. Yeah, I was just about to say that's a good call there for Farley to go to the off-speed. 2-2. Two -two. And you saw Bump tune up those last two fastballs sitting right on him. Good choice to go to the off-speed, see what she does here. 2-2 two -two again is a little high. Bump drew a walk her first time up, and for a, a hitter that has really struggled with the strikeout in her Michigan career, looking very patient here on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, Michigan hitters as a whole have been very patient and very disciplined so far in the box. 3-2 count. The wind up, and the pitch, Bump swings, pops this one up, but it's going to get out of play, and it will bounce over our heads on the rooftop. Baseball team has finished their practice here on the field behind us. It's like that softball rolled off the roof and into the stands of the baseball stadium. A couple fans go down there to grab it. Full count again. The pitch just a tad inside. Wow. That pitch has seemed to be a strike most of the day, but Bump draws her second walk, and now Michigan two aboard and two outs. And striding to the plate will be Hannah Carson. Yeah, Florida fans unhappy with that one. That's the kind of pitch that if you do get rung up on, your coach tells you, hey, that one was too close to take. You got to jump on that. But Michigan, fortunate in this case, bump gets the walk. Hannah Carson's going to come up with two outs and two runners on, one in scoring position, that runner being over right us. Carson, single to score two last inning, trying to do the same here with runners on first and second and two outs. She takes the first pitch high. Carson, the sophomore catcher for Michigan, steps out of the box, takes a good practice cut, and gets ready to step back in. Readies her bat, cocks it over the left shoulder. 1-0 on the way. Called strike, 1-1. One one. Carson steps back in, 1-1 one, one count. Farley also rocking the sunflower. In the hair, 1-1 one, one coming, swing and a ground ball foul, 1-2. and two. Saw a thing on Twitter the other day that Tim Walton, the Gators head coach, tweeted out about how you can now buy the Sunflowers at some Florida versions of the M-Den on the University of Florida. <laughs> They're also selling softball jerseys there now. would love to see that at the M-Den in Ann Arbor. Oh, I'd definitely rock a softball jersey. I'd love it. 1-2 count. Farley winds up the pitch. Down and away, two and two. Florida here again, maybe seeing glimpses of last inning. Michigan trying to piece together another two out rally. Carson has worked her way up to a two two count. The wind up, the pitch, down and away, three and two. Really patient at bat. Haley Hogan, Ron waiting on deck if Carson can draw another walk and load up the bases. Yeah, both runners are going to be going on the pitch full count with two outs. Farley checks the wristband. 3-2 on the way. Carson swings, hits this one, and it will be gloved by the shortstop, Reynoso, and she taps the bag for the out. Almost snuck under the glove, and what a score to run, but Florida able to escape. Michigan makes some work. We'll strand two. We'll go to the bottom of the second. 5-0 Wolverines on top. You're listening to Michigan Softball 
on WCBN Sports. And yeah, we'd like you to thank we'd like to thank everybody listening from home. Give a few shout outs. We got some people watching from Maine, uh, some from California, one from Dayton, Ohio, from Hockey, Texas, Durham, North Carolina. Again, like to just thank everybody for listening and tuning in. Starocco will go back out there for her second inning work. We're being told that they are now selling softball jerseys at the M Den. I have not seen them. I have to go in there and check that out. We get back in town. Big day for Michigan athletics already. Michigan basketball back in Ann Arbor were able to eke out a win over rival Michigan State, and that's huge for their tournament hopes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Michigan, looking at the stats earlier, they were at the very bottom of the Big Ten rankings, but everybody in the Big Ten is so close. They're just teams separated by you know one win or one loss, and so many teams tied for positions. And then we'll have the second game after this one. Also tonight will be Michigan hockey against Wisconsin. That one will also be on WCBN Sports. That game, I believe, scheduled to start at 7:30 down at Yost. Michigan going for the sweep after defeating Wisconsin eight to four last night. A lot of goals in a hockey game, and Nick Granowitz had a hat trick, so a busy weekend here for WCBN Sports, and we'll have the final game of this tournament tomorrow morning at nine against Fresno State. That one's the first game of the morning, so it will start at nine, unlike these last few games that have all started at times they were not initially scheduled for. Yeah, focus on the other games. A couple more shout outs real quick before we get going. Listening from Toledo, Ohio, a few from the UP, from Indiana, and all the way from the hill in right field. <laughs> Well, we said you could listen to us at the game as well. So Starocko gets ready to go to work here in the bottom of the second. First pitch, a little high to Goddard. It will be Bailey Goddard, followed by Jade Carraway, and then Sophia Reynoso. This 6 7 8, you'd love to see Starocko get a quick 1 2 3 inning here in the bottom of the order. Yeah, this is where Starocko thrives against the quote unquote weaker parts of the lineup. Pitch a little high, 2 0. Oh. Michigan wearing the all white uniforms. Blue sleeves on the tops and blue socks with the blue piping down the pants. 2 0 coming, swinging a foul back to the screen by Goddard. Taylor Bump walks from third base to say a couple words to Starocko. Now Goddard gets back in the batter's box. Float had a couple singles in that first inning, but stranded two. Starocko collected one strikeout in that frame. 2 1 count. Goddard check swing, but she clearly went around there on a pitch high. 2 and 2. Shadows will continue to be a factor. Right now, it's pretty much just in the right field corner where some trees have started to crowd. Also, right center warning track. 2 2. Swing and a miss. And down goes Goddard after falling behind 2-0. Nice job by Starocko there to work back and get a K. Yeah, absolutely. Love to see that if you're a Michigan coach. Yeah, like you said, those shadows did start to play a factor in the game yesterday against Illinois State, the later game. About the whole infield eventually got covered. And Michigan certainly will play with probably the lights on by the time the end of the USF game finishes. Today's been running well below schedule. That one stroked into right field, but it will drop foul and hop into the Florida bullpen. That was the first pitch to Jade Carraway. She was out in front of it and poked it down the line. In particular, it was the Florida Fresno State game before this one that messed everything up. That game was close to three hours in length. Six to four, Florida win, but Fresno State had the bases loaded with one out in the seventh. Lugo helped the Gators escape with a victory in that one. 0-1 count, Starocko winds up, delivers that one, fouled back, 0-2. Ooh, that one landed right on the stairs right next to us over on our right-hand side. Hopefully nobody was walking up. You sound like you want to throw off the headset and run over there and grab it. I was just like looking over and I saw it fall and I was like, <laughs> oh boy. Because people have been walking up and down those stairs all game. 0-2 count, I'll wind up in the pitch, swing and a line drive right back up the middle. Nice piece of hitting from Carraway. And Starocko left that one 
over the plate too much allows the third single of the game. Which will bring up Sofia Reynoso, followed by Cheyenne Lindsay here, eight and nine, in the bottom of this second inning. Florida's now gotten three hits. None of them have been super hard and hit, though. And that's what you want to see for Straka, somebody who has struggled with the home run in her career. That one, just a solid single up the middle. Straka spins the ball in the right hand, winds up, first pitch, a little high. Carson gets up there. Yeah, one little fun thing to point out about the Florida Gators is Genoso steps up to bat. A lot of Gators are wearing some rather unusual numbers for softball. We got a 74, a 99, and a 50, whereas Michigan's are usually all low 20s. Yeah, I like the variation. 1-0, called strike. Onto the change up there, and it comfortably nestled itself over the plate, froze the hitter. Reynoso, redshirt senior from Palmdale, California. Playing shortstop today for Florida. 1-1, one, one. that one I think got a piece of the bat. Yep, and it will, goes back to the screen. Now the count will go to one and two. That one rode in on the hands and Straco yeah, a, a little second, fortunate. Almost, <laughs> almost looked like a hitter in the hands. So one, two count. Can Straco put Reynoso away? She was a 251 hitter a year ago. Straco spins the ball, winds up, delivers the one, two, swinging a pop up into left field, charging Lexi Blair. She'll come on and make the catch. That one hung up just enough. Another pretty feeble ball that just floated through the air and the speed of Lexi Blair and left able to run that one down. Two outs in the inning, runner still at first. That'll bring up the nine hitter, Cheyenne Lindsay. Yeah, Lexi Blair's a Jody really getting shown off there. That ball didn't have much on it, like you said. Might have dropped if anybody else was in left field, but like we said, Lexi Blair's speed. Cheyenne Lindsay steps up the left fielder today. And she swings and misses. Slap hitter runs up and not able to connect on that one. Lindsay played in 40 games a year ago, started 10 of them, mostly a pinch hitter and a pinch runner. No home runs is the usual for a slap hitter, just one extra base hit, 13 strikeouts in 56 at bats. Runner on first, two outs, 0-1 coming. That one right down the pipe, 0-2, and, and Soraka now one strike away from putting up another goose egg on the board. It'd be huge for Storaco. Michigan unable to put up any runs in the top of the second. Holding the Gators to no runs in the second entirely would be huge. Bail Michigan's offense out a little bit. 0-2 count. Storaco puts the ball in the glove. The wind up, the pitch, swing and a miss. She chases one upstairs, and Alex Storaco collects her third strikeout of the game. Another scoreless inning, and Michigan continues to lead 5-0 to the top of the third at the USF Rawlings Invitational in Tampa, Florida. You're listening to WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. One left on there for Florida. They've left three on as we now continue into this third inning. Fans out in left field. Mostly Michigan contingent out in left, whereas it's mostly Florida contingent out in right field. Don't think Michigan is able to bring their team bus. Obviously, the team flew down here, didn't drive it down. So just the Gators are the ones with the team bus. We can see it pretty well from our angle. You could probably see that pretty well from space. Yeah, that is a bright bus. <laughs> it's blue for about the first 75% of the bus, and then it gets orange at the back. And in the blue area, it's big gators in orange. And then the trademark logo there on the side. That's a, that's a nice looking bus. Yeah, it is. I don't think I've seen too many schools have a bus all tricked out like that. So I, I know Michigan. Florida. I know Michigan football does. But I think the bus they have for football is the one that carries the equipment. Because I think the team has to go on multiple buses. Yeah. The amount of players on a football roster. But... And there's a champion bus out there. That might be Michigan's or it might, yeah, it probably is Michigan's because USF, the hosts, are not going to have a bus. So. Yeah. And the Go Blue chant starting back up as they're ready to go here in the top of the third. It'll be Haley Hoganrod, Thais Gonzalez, and Natalia Rodriguez, 7 8 9 to face Danny Farley. 5 nothing Michigan on top. Oh, 
Hogenrod stepping back into the box. She's one for one on the day, looking to advance that. Here's the first pitch. Yeah, so just a little inside. Hogenrod twists out of the way. Haley doubled off the base of right field her first time up. She eventually came around to score Michigan's fifth run in that first inning. At crooked five spot, the only non-zero number on the line score right now. And now we got an issue, I think, with equipment. Something going on with Farley. Now she shakes it off. Both infielders had walked in from the left side to talk to her. And the umpire, Terry Holt, down there at third had walked in. 1-0 count. The windup, the pitch. It's a strike at the top of the zone. 1-1. One and one. Yeah, not really too sure what was going on there. She kind of fixed her hair. Maybe something was happening with the sunflower. Who knows? 1-1 one, one count. Haley takes a strike on the inner edge, one and two. Continues to be just a beautiful day here in Tampa. We're under the roof in the shade, and it is not cold at all. Yesterday got a little chilly by the end with the wind, but today beautiful. Hoganrod takes that pitch inside, two and two. Yeah, couldn't really have asked for a better day. 70 degrees and sunny, no breeze really going. It's a great day to be alive. Hogenrod steps in the batter's box. 2-2 two, two count. The wind up, the pitch, she clobbers this one into left center field. That one's gonna get down in the gap and roll all the way to the wall. That's at least she a will double. cruise into second. Hutch holds her there, but a leadoff double for Michigan's center fielder, Haley Hogenrod, and she gets things going here in the top of the third. Great piece of hitting by that, right there by Hogenrod. Took that pitch and just drove it. So Hogenrod takes off. The elbow guard throws it over to Juju Jimenez. Now that'll bring up Thais Gonzalez. Michigan gonna try to scratch some more across and pad that lead. Already up five nothing. Thais digs in the batter's box. First pitch taken for a strike. Thais hit a ground ball over to second that Hannah Adams rushed and it bounced off her glove and rolled in to shallow right field, allowed the inning to continue going. 0-1, she shows bunt, lays it down, that is a foul ball. It was gonna be a very close play at first, looks like the throw was in time, but regardless, Liz Hammerschmidt, the home plate umpire, was all over it. Didn't quite get out of the batter's box, but what a bunt that was. That one just fell down and died. Yeah, you'd ideally like the ball to die just a couple more steps in front, so at least you make the catcher walk forward Yeah, make the tad. catcher move a little bit, but. It was a pretty good one. Hogan right down there at second, 0-2 count. See if Thais tries to force it here with two strikes and the threat of a strikeout if the bunt goes foul. 0-2 coming, takes it just off the plate, one and two. Yeah, great pitch there by Danny Farley going to that bottom uh, low and away, away from Gonzalez. A wind up, the one, two, swings and hits that one off her outer right calf. And it'll go foul. Thais winced for a second, now steps out of the batter's box, tries to walk it off. Yeah, those ones are always tough, coming down and hitting you. Got a couple wayward toddlers running in the media section behind us. <laughs> One, two count, that skips in the dirt. A really nice block behind the plate by Roberts to keep Hoganrod down there at second. Yeah, Roberts sliding over into the right-handers batter's box to grab that one. The count evens at two apiece. Michigan continues to make Farley work in every at-bat. Two, two on the way, swing and a ground ball right to first, but it's misplayed there by Lindemann. Will roll into foul ground. Coming on home is Haley. She slides in safe at first. That's gonna go down as an E3, and it's six nothing Michigan. The impressive, aggressive Michigan base running continues. Hoganrod scoring all the way from second on a botched ground ball towards first base. And two Lindemann, not to absolve her from that error, but that was a very hard hit ball. She did a good job to knock it down, but she again took a very awkward angle. We've seen her try to sort of stab it with the backhand, and it allowed it to sort of roll away from her into foul territory. She had to turn her back and run after it. 
and then able to slide home was Hogenrod. Regardless, it was going to be a productive out. Hogenrod was going to move up to third with one out, and instead now runner on first and no outs, another run in. And down there at first is Gonzalez. Natalia Rodriguez steps in, takes ball one. And Florida now trying to make sure this game does not slip away. 1-0 coming. Nat Rod lays down the bunt, but it goes foul. 1-1. One one. Yeah, a little late to square there. Wanted to wait until the last second. Might have waited a little bit too long. Couldn't get the bat quite all the way around. That bunt's going to drop foul, like he said. No outs in the top of the third, and there's already three errors for Florida in this game. Michigan's done a really good job of hitting in this game, but they've gotten some help, too. 1-1 one, one coming is in the dirt, 2-1. And, and I think that's right. the biggest thing Michigan has done in this game is not strike out. They've put balls in play, and that has put pressure on the defense, and that defense has cracked so exactly. far. They're making, the make, they're making the defense make mistakes. They're not taking themselves out of this game. They're making Florida make plays. 2-1 coming, I guess a little high, 3-1. Compact strike zone right now with Natalia Rodriguez in the batter's box, one of the shorter players in Michigan's lineup. Three and one, the count. Thais Gonzalez has got speed down there at first, but Michigan doesn't need to be aggressive. Already up six nothing. Rodriguez squares to bunt again and takes it for ball four. She thought it was a strike. Stayed in that batter's box a long time. And then after about five seconds, Liz Hammerschmidt did not go up with the arm, and so she goes on down to first. If you're Michigan, this is a position you love to be in. Got the top of the order coming up. Lexi Blair, probably your best hitter up in the box with no outs and two runners on. Love to see that. Lexi's hit a couple balls hard into the outfield, one to left and one a sinking liner to center. Hasn't paid off yet, but she could really crack this game open. The six nothing lead. Roberts went out to talk to Farley. Now she goes back behind home plate wearing Really bright orange and blue catcher gear. First pitch to Lexi Blair is up high, 1-0. and Farley working right now. She entered this inning having thrown 20 pitches and now a member of the coaching staff coming out of the dugout to potentially look at her about something. Not sure if that is Tim Walton or if it is someone else. It is a man, so have to look at their coaching staff of Florida to figure out who that is going on out there. Yeah, this is a tough position to be in if you're Farley because Lexi Blair up to bat, you know, Michigan's best hitter, arguably. You don't want to give her anything to hit with runners in scoring position. But then if you walk her, you've got bases loaded with no outs in the meat of Michigan's lineup coming up. She's in a tough spot. Carol Hutchins and Bonnie Thole both come over, talk to both Lexi and Juju Jimenez, who is on deck. And it's never, you know, you never want to talk about this against a team in the top ten like Florida, but the run rule is eight runs after five. Michigan's at six with two runners on already in the third. Lexi Blair takes that one outside 2-0, and oh, and sort of feels like Hammerschmidt is starting to squeeze the pitcher Farley right now, trying to make her throw strikes. Yeah, absolutely. I personally don't think that Blair's going to get anything too good to hit here. She's going to dance around the corners. Yep, she did that right there down and away 3-0 and now. And one ball away from walking, the base is loaded. And again, with Florida having gone through a really tough game where they used two other pitchers almost to exhaustion against Fresno State. They're running low on arms. 3-0 on the way. Blair will take all the way, and it's down. Ball four, four-pitch walk. Base is loaded now for Jimenez in Michigan. Really threatening to pile it on here, leading 6-0. Yeah, Juju is 0 for 2 so far in this game, but neither of those balls that she hit were easy outs. Both of them were really hard hit balls deep. If she can get a hold of this one, we might have a pretty exciting call on our hands. We've seen that power from her so far in her Michigan career. Put one up against the wall yesterday in that double. That ended up being the game winning hit against Illinois State. Florida in run prevention mode draws the infield in. First pitch to Jimenez is in tight, 1 0. Reynoso and Adams at short and second are playing the closest in. Now Reynoso actually backs up just behind a parallel line from second to third. Eccles playing parallel to the bag. Adams quite a bit in. 
1-0 coming, swinging a pop-up in foul ground, and this be a bailout out and a pop-out from the freshman for the first out of the inning. That's a big, big out. Yeah, it's an easy one for Florida there. Farley, you know, Farley doesn't have to throw too many pitches, and there's no real uh, threat for Michigan to score on that. That's Lou where, Allen, though, coming up. Yeah, as Lou steps in, that's that's one where you just like Jimenez to slow it down a little bit, be a bit more patient. Lou swings, hits this one down the line, but it goes foul. Just a tad out in front of it. She scorched it, but it pulls it foul, and you can see Lou Allen is up there ready to hit the base, the softball. Yeah, Lou got every bit of that ball. She was not holding back. 6 nothing lead, bases loaded, one out, infield still drawn in. 0-1 coming, called strike, 0-2. Allen struck out looking her last time up. She singled back in the first off of Lugo. Farley trying to come up with a big, big strikeout here. 0-2 count, wind up. The pitch and it goes off the nub of the bat there at the end. So Lou will step out, get another pitch. Farley picks up the rosin bag, puts it down, trying to come up with a big pitch against a powerful hitter. Yeah, 0 2 here. I'm going to stay away from off speed if I'm Farley. I'm going low and away with a fastball. 0-2 coming, she swings, hits this one high in the sky to right field, moving over towards the line. There could be a play at the plate, there's going to be, she dropped it! Did she make the catch first? I believe she did. Yep, so the run will score on a sacrifice fly, 7-0, it was on the transfer from the glove to the hand, so the out is recorded. A foul out just over the line in right field, but Lou Allen scratches another run across, and Michigan makes it 7-0. Yeah, you love to see that if you're Michigan, obviously not what Lou Allen probably wanted to do, probably would have wanted to keep that ball fair. But an RBI is an RBI. Michigan puts another one up here in the top of the third. So now that'll bring up Morgan Overitis. And I, Tim Walton has come out trying to talk to the third base umpire, Terry Holt. I don't know if he had questions about tagging up or a question about whether that one was just standardly dropped. He continues to yell over there. They're not gonna change everything. There's no replay here, no cameras. So regardless, Runners on the corners now as Natalia Rodriguez moved up from second to third. I think it was pretty clear that that was a catch and drop on the transfer. Yeah. Overrida stands in there. First pitch, she takes a little high. Morgan today, two for two. Single could put Michigan up eight runs. One and oh the count. I mean, if all put in the right position, Lexi Blair might be able to score from first. We know she has the wheels. Now, Farley taking a long time there, and Overitis calls time, steps out. Michigan now on the game, eight hits and 16 at-bats, a 500 batting average. 1-0 coming, and Lexi goes on down to second. The throw cut off by the pitcher Farley trying to prevent the double steal. So now Michigan, two runners in scoring position. Now a single really will score too, especially with Lexi Blair now sitting on second base. 2-0 count. Wind up, the pitch over right is checks her swing, did not go around as the ball is up high. 3-0 now the count. And Taylor Bump waiting on deck. And a busy scorecard today over right is her third at bat in as many innings. Two outs in the third. Runners on second and third, 7-0 Michigan. 3-0 coming, and Overitis was just about to step out, and that's going to be a balk, I think. Yeah. Or no, they're just going to give her the base, I think on an intentional walk would be my guess. Maybe. I'm kind of confused what happened there. Because, it looks like an intentional walk or else. Because Carol Hutchins is now talking to Terry Holt, wondering what just happened there. Regardless, runner goes on down to first, but the runners don't move up. It was a 3-0 count, and the pitcher, Farley, just sort of flinched as Overitis was stepping out of the batter's box. Now Taylor Bump takes one right at the belt on the inner half of the plate for strike one. Regardless, runner moves up, base is loaded. Taylor Bump's drawn two walks today. 0-1 count, looking to make contact for the first time. She takes that one for a strike, really trying to frame it on the inner half of the plate. 
sort of bending out of the way but not getting the benefit of the calls. And Les Hammerschmidt goes up with the right hand again now in an 0-2 hole. Taylor needs to be in plate protection mode here. The windup, the pitch, swing and a miss. And Michigan will put up two in the inning, but they'll strand the bases loaded, and we will go to the bottom of the third. Michigan 7, Florida 0. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Great pitch there by Farley going right back to that same inside fastball slot. Even if she was able to do something with it, that pitch was going to handcuff her. Now we have a bit of a break in the action as we head now to the bottom of the third. And you really got the sense Michigan could have buried Florida there. The bump could connect. Regardless, Gators still have a lot of work to do. So person out in right field is clarifying for us. And on 3-0, Michigan stands in the box. And then as the pitcher starts her motion, they step back in the box. It threw the pitcher off, and she stopped her motion, which had already started. This meant ball four. So that's exactly what we had described, but it is just a standard ball four because of the stop motion. Shout out to Becky for the clarification on that one. Storacco goes back out to work here. In the bottom of the third, she'll face that dangerous top of the order as Florida, you know, in any kind of comeback, you just have to start chipping away. Michigan doing their infield warm-ups right now. Audrey LeClaire helping the outfielders warm up, play catch. Now the infielders meet in the circle, talk with Storaco, and get ready to go back to work. Seven-run advantage. Yeah, Michigan's defense going to look to do everything they can here to end this game early. Like you said, run rule is eight after five. Michigan currently up seven after two and a half. Storaco stands. Ready to face Hannah Adams, who singled back at the top of the first. First pitch, just a tad outside, 1-0. and Tim Walton, Michigan, or Florida's head coach, stands over on the third base side. Bunt laid down there, goes foul by Hannah Adams. He's the third base coach. Looking at Michigan's Taylor Bump down there, good view. The third base bag. Storaco now picks the ball back up in a 1-1 count. Storaco looks over, third base. The corner's drawn in after that bunt was shown by Adams. 1-1 coming, swinging a foul back. High and looping onto the concourse. Storaco walks back to the edge of the circle to settle herself down a little bit. One and two the count. Looks into the dugout at Hutch and Jen Brundage, both sitting in a couple of yellow buckets in that dugout. Head in the count, one, two. The pitch swinging a fly ball into center field. Coming over Haley Hoganrod, she'll make the play in left center field for the first side of the inning. That's an easy play for a great outfielder like Hoganrod. That ball just stood up in the air. She had to move a little bit, but nothing too, nothing too scary. And that's kind of a microcosm of the balls that have been hit today by the Gators, ones that have just sort of hung up in the air. They've flown out a couple of times in this game, but they haven't been hard hit balls. They've just been ones that have hung up, died well short of the warning track, and Straco continues to work through this game. Pitch high there to Lindemann, who flew out to left back in the first. Yeah, it's really just a testament to Storaco's location. Hasn't given Florida anything over the plate. Everything that Florida's had to hit has been either outside they've had to reach or they've been handcuffed on the inside corner. Great job by Storaco so far. 1-0 count. Lindemann watches that one sail down the middle for a strike. 1-1 count. Alex flips the ball up in the air and it lands in her right hand. Gets the signs. The wind up, the 1-1 one, one coming, and Lindemann was swinging for the fences there, and she cut and missed one and two. Yeah, nothing, nothing really too much to say there. Just Lindemann just missed. Good pitch by Sirocco. Now we'll see if she goes with the off speed here to try to get a swing and a miss. Ahead in the count, one and two. 
The wind up, the pitch, swing and a fly ball to left field, and that, that one, <laughs> not even close, and it's seven to one. Kendall Lindemann, her 15 homers a year ago, and she notches one here. Yeah, that one was, we've seen a couple no-doubters so far this weekend, but that one was a no-doubter. As soon as that ball left her path, that one was gone. Yeah, that's a home run in a number of college baseball ballparks. For Michigan fans' perspective, that's one that may well have landed in Ray Fisher Stadium if this game were being played in Alumni Field. An absolute tank makes it 7-1, to one, and now Carla Eccles will come up to the plate. Yeah, it was just praising Sirocco's location there. That one got a little bit away from her. Left that fastball right over the middle of the plate. Lindman, obviously a power hitter. She's going to drive that one every time. So 7-1, to one, Straka just needs to shake it off and keep moving. First pitch up to Eccles is high. She's missed on the first pitch quite a bit in this inning. But yesterday we saw her surrender a home run against Georgia State that cut it to 2-1, to one and she just shook it off and kept working her way through that Panther order. And that's what she's got to do here. That's now the fourth hit of the game by Florida. A 1-0 called strike to Eccles, and that was really the first truly hard, hard hit ball we've seen all day. And it was smoked. Yeah, absolutely. Every other hit from the Florida Gators so far has been a little blooper, like we've said. Lindemann got every piece of that last one. 1-1 one, one count. Wind up, and the pitch is in the dirt, 2-1. Nice block by Carson. Yep, she gets low to knock that one down. Alex has got three Ks through two innings. Got a fly out, and then just surrendered a home run, and the Gators are on the board. Two and one. Wind up in the delivery, swinging a foul straight back to the screen. Two and two, and you can see Eccles and Lindemann, they've both been swinging four home runs. Yeah, both of them just looking to jumpstart this Florida offense. Being down seven, nothing is never fun. Lindemann trying to get something started there with that solo shot. Maybe giving Florida a little bit of, uh, a little bit of momentum, sorry. Two, two count. Cut it. Wind up, and Eccles thought about swinging, but that one was way down and away. Count runs full. Three and two the count. Brundage holds up a left fist there in the Michigan dugout as the sign. Straco settles down. She winds up the pitch, that one low, and Eccles draws a hard-earned walk. That's a tough at bat there by Eccles, making Storaco throw as many pitches as she could. Now Carson and Brundage will go out there. Storaco now approaching 50 pitches. And that'll bring up Jordan Roberts. But again, if you are Michigan, you got through that top three, runner on and one out. And now you have to make work with that bottom half. And you look at the first time through, after the first three, the bottom six went one for six against Turaco. Exactly. If you're Michigan, getting to the bottom part of this lineup, getting through that meat of the top, that's really your goal. Turaco can continue to dominate this lower half. Really the only danger for Michigan is those top four or, five, or top three or four batters. Jordan Roberts is a good power hitter with nine home runs. The average was down at 262 a year ago, though, and... You look at Roberts, 55 strikeouts and 168 at bats. She struck out in the first inning. This is a good hitter for Storaco to face in that she is prone to the strikeout. Eccles down there at first, 7-1 Wolverines. First pitch to Roberts. It's a little down and in. Now four batters in this top of the third, and all four of the first pitch has missed the zone. Never easy to pitch from behind. Straco takes a sigh and tries to settle herself down. 1-0 coming, swinging a fly ball to center field. Well hit, Florida crowd got excited, but it's straight at Haley Hoganrod. She makes the catch five steps in front of the warning track. A hard hit, second out of the inning. Yeah, good read there by Hoganrod, blocking the sun with her glove. Center field, the sun's probably got to be brutal. You can see the sun, or you can see the shadows being projected from that way. Nice catch there. Regardless, it goes down as a big second out. Eccles still at first. 
Matthews at the plate. First pitch up high. 1 and 0. Matthews ducks out of the way. Now Lou Allen walks over, shouts a couple of things. Storacco at 58 pitches now. In a decent spot to try and work through all seven. one on the way, swinging a high pop up in the infield. This one's gonna be hard to see. Taylor Bump thinks she's got it and she does. That is not an easy play with the hot Florida sun right in her eyes. But regardless, Michigan works through it. They surrender a walk and a solo homer, but it's still seven to one and we go to the fourth. Hey, good job by Michigan there, minimizing the damage. Lindemann got hers, but way to cut it at the knees there. Florida may have gotten one more base runner, but no damage really. And you look at that third inning as a whole, Michigan puts two up, Florida puts one up. They leave the third with a larger lead than they entered it. She so worked through a little bit of damage, but you keep on chugging forward. Seven runs on eight hits for Michigan, one run on four hits for Florida, and the big three errors committed. Michigan's left seven on, Gators have left four on, and we now go to the top of the fourth. Danny Farley goes back out there for another inning of work. We're back now to start the top of the fourth inning. Be Hannah Carson leading things off for the Michigan Wolverines. They lead seven to one here in the top of the fourth inning over the Florida Gators, number 17 Michigan, with a crooked lead right now over number seven Florida. In the opening weekend of the 2020 NCAA softball season, team 43, the 43rd season of Michigan softball, two and zero on the season, and they are leading here early on, quick game recap as Carson's about to check in. Michigan put up five in the first, all with two outs, thanks to three singles, a double, a walk, and two errors committed by the Gators' sloppy defense. Michigan put five up. Alex Duraco navigated through two scoreless innings. Wolverines put two more up in the top of the third, thanks to a double and another error. Florida just got one back off a of Kendall Lindemann moonshot home run to make it seven to one, but that's where we stand as the Wolverine hitters are back out there. Carson takes ball one. We have a substitution. Bufano has moved into right field for Jordan Matthews here in the Gators defense. 1-0 coming, swing and a little blooper in the infield will be caught by Reynoso at short for the first out of the inning. Yeah, Carson just kind of missed that one. Went off the very end of her bat and just floated over the third baseman's head. Nice play there by the shortstop Reynoso, though, to come over and grab that one. So that'll bring up Haley Hoganrod. She's got a pair of doubles today, a double in the first and then a double to lead off the third. She came around to score both times. And, oh, another balk. As coming forward with her movement, there was Farley, and she just didn't let the ball go. It had the full windmill motion and just didn't release it. As we noted last inning when there was a balk in softball, the balk goes as just a standard ball for those unfamiliar and perhaps more familiar with balks in baseball. So it's 1-0 the count on Haley Hoganrod. Danny Farley came in to begin the second inning after Lugo, the starter, allowed five runs in the first. Farley's allowed two so far. She's been battered, but has gotten through it mostly, but now two box just hasn't seemed comfortable, and she delivers that one up at the head level of Hoganrod 2-0. Oh. Yeah, I feel like Farley thinks she has to come in and do it all herself. You're trying to work herself out of that 5-0 hold that Lugo put her in. This is a dangerous position, though, 2-0 -oh count. Hoganrod takes that strike, 2-1. There's an argument in the chat about whether your box or illegal pitches. Regardless, it goes down as a ball, two and one. There's a called strike, two and two. That one got the outside corner. Hoganrod thought that one was definitely the ball, kind of stepped out of the box there. Now she's taking a long vacation over there towards third baseline, taking Danny, a couple practice swings. Danny Farley now at 60 pitches on the day, 2-2 two, two coming. Haley chops it foul down the third baseline. 
And Alex Duraco walks out that direction. She's taking a long walk. Maybe trying to keep warm. She goes over towards her backpack and looks at a Michigan player down there warming up. That looks like Lauren Esman taking some practice swings for the Wolverines. Hoganrod stands in the batter's box. The wind up the 2-2 and she swings and misses for out number two of the inning. What a bounce back there by Danny Farley. He's in a dangerous 2-0 scenario in a hitter's count there for Hoganrod. Eventually work her way back up with a nice strikeout. Up next is going to be number 22, Thais Gonzalez, the lefty coming up. Thais has reached on errors twice in this game. She has produced a pair of botched balls by the Gator defense, one of which by Hannah Adams, the second baseman, another one by Kendall Lindemann. Both were solidly hit balls that put pressure on the defense. They were unable to rise to the occasion. 1-0 coming. It's a ball off the plate, 2-0. Thais Gonzalez now at the plate for her third time. This is Michigan's third time through the order with two outs in the top of the fourth. That's how they've gotten seven runs up on the board. Farley trying to get the first 1-2-3 inning of the game for the Gators. 2-0, and that one is hammered. Foul down the first base side. Goes under the glove of Lindemann and rolls all the way into the corner where Bufano goes after it. About a foot to the left, and that might have been a, that would have been an easy double, maybe a triple for Gonzalez. The shade now is completely covered right field, that tree line, and the overhang on the third base side. The roof now shades the entire first baseline. Pitch up high now, three and one on Thais Gonzalez. And the Gonzalez. lone light post cuts across the infield. Gonzalez. Hit that foul ball on her last header's count. Has another one here with 3-1. Going to look for that fastball down the middle. Look to do something with it. 3-1. She swings and pops it up sky high into shallow left field. And moving back to make the play is Reynoso. And the Gators finally get a comfortable 1-2-3 inning. Michigan goes to the bottom of the fourth with a 7-1 lead. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Michigan has been unable to really capitalize on their opportunities with hitters counts today. We've seen about three or four pop-ups where they've had 2-0 or 3-1 counts, pitches they've been looking to drive but unable to do so. Yeah, they've been their, they've done their best damage with two strikes, often in 2-2 counts today. Straco goes out to continue to warm things up. There continues to be an argument about the box illegal pitch thing raging in the live chat, and we are not going to weigh in on that. We will look at the NCAA rulebook in between games we're not trying to be partisans in this dispute. Yeah, we can check the rule book and report back later <laughs> for the second game. Michigan, though, going into the bottom of the fourth. They're going to need to put up two, hold Florida scoreless here and put up two more if they want a run rule here in this game. Storocco, though, has looked very solid so far. Michigan defense. Hasn't really made any mistakes. The sole run has come off a solo shot. Here Leading in the bottom. For the Florida Gators, it's going to be number 50, Goddard, the right handed freshman. Yeah, six, seven, eight here for Florida. And again, this is where you want to see a quick inning for Alex Duraco. First pitch to Goddard is, I guess, a little low, 1 0. Alex has stayed in the low 60s with the fastball, occasionally creeping to 66 or 67, and the off-speed stuff has been mid-50s. Not the gigantic variation in speed you see with Bobian, but has overall been pretty sharp. Held Florida to four hits through three. A 1-0 to Goddard is high, 2-0, and, and that's been really the only complaint so far against Duraco has been the tendency to fall behind hitters and have to work back into the counts. You'd like to see a little bit quicker outs from Alex, she takes a sigh. 2-0 coming. And that one's a little low, 3-0. And, and Goddard probably just most likely gonna bail out on this one, let this one go by, try and work this walk. The 3-0 count coming. Storaco winds up, and that's a called strike on the outside edge, 3-1. 
A nice pitch to come back with. Yeah, absolutely, and she's going to have to come back with it again here. 3-1 the count. Alex checks the wristband. Winds up, 3-1 coming. That's a called strike. 3-2. and two. Goddard struck out swinging her first time up. Sophomore righty from Michigan spins the ball, winds up. 3-2, swing and a fly ball down the line. Going to arc and drop foul. Lexi Blair chasing after it. It bounces right onto the dirt where the grass had ended. Nice hustle there, though, by Lexi Blair. Trying to get over. Taylor Bump comes over and gives Storaco a pat on the rear. She gets the ball back in the glove and will set up to do the payoff pitch again. Goddard, the only freshman in the Florida starting lineup. Buffano just inserted in a few moments ago. 3-2 coming, swing and a line drive, and out in front of it again, pounds it foul. Could have bounced right back to Lexi Blair, though, in her usual left field spot. Didn't have to move too much. A battle here for Alex Duraco in the circle. It's been a long at-bat so far here. Long battle between Alex Rocco and Bailey Goddard. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. 3-2 swing and just getting a piece. Totally off balance there. I think that's the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Honestly, it might have been for the best that she got a piece of that one. Carson was diving over for that one. Don't know if she'd be able to block it. Might have been a pass ball. Well, if you're Straco, you look at that and you see Goddard is really looking to swing. He can take another risk here. 3-2, but that one sails way high, and Goddard gets on with a leadoff walk. First time since the first inning that the leadoff batter has gotten aboard, and Jade Carraway will come up now with the runner on and nobody out in this inning. Yeah, Carraway, the senior, wearing number seven, one for one on the day, had a single in the second inning. Straco winds up. First pitch to Carraway is popped up sky high in foul ground. Jimenez calls for it. She runs over and drops it in the glove, and it popped out, and that'll go down as an error. And Storaco, unfortunately, not able to get an easy one pitch out. But, again, the shade, as we had mentioned, yeah, was tricky a, over there. That's a tough ball to catch. Got to decide whether Lou Allen's going to try and run back and grab that one or... Jimenez is going to run all the way from second base to try and catch it, plus the shift, like you said, from the sunny to the shady area. 0-1 coming, Carraway checks her swing. It's a strike anyway, 0-2. If you're somebody like Jimenez, you just need to shake that one off. Yeah, Rodriguez and Jimenez playing back for the double play here. From Sirocco, got to get something that she's either just going to miss or put on the ground. 0-2 coming, Carraway swings and misses. Way off balance there. Straco went the off-speed stuff and Carraway was looking for a fastball. That goes down as the fourth strike out of the game for Alex. One out here in the bottom of the fourth. Sophia Reynoso will come up now. Lindsay on deck, eight and nine. Straco checks the wristband. Gets ready to wind up. First pitch to Reynoso. Waves and misses on one upstairs. Nice pitch there by Sirocco. Just blowing it by Reynoso. Oh, 1 count. Florida trying to chip away here in the bottom of the fourth. Sirocco winds up. That pitch just gets a missing. little inside. Hmm. Not sure where that one missed. Straco stepping back into the circle now, spinning the ball in her right hand. The 1-1 one, one count coming over to Reynoso. One out, one runner on base. Yeah, Bump and Allen both playing a little bit in. Looking for a potential bunt. Reynoso scalds this one into left field, a base hit. Now two runners aboard and one out. Bring Cheyenne Lindsay to the plate. Yeah, that one, Taylor Bump probably didn't have a chance on it, whether she, not, she was playing... Uh, back at a normal depth, that ball just absolutely ripped in the gap between short and third. And so now, 
That will bring Cheyenne Lindsay to the plate. Two on and one out. This is the Gators' best rally since the first inning, trying to chip their way back in it. Megan Bobian is down in the dugout. She's available for this game if ever needed. And Lindsay looks at the first pitch, gliding a little outside, 1-0. Oh. Straco now over 70 pitches on the game. Again, if you're Straco here, you want to give the hitter something they can hit but put it on the ground. Don't want to give them anything in their wheelhouse, nothing they can drive. 1-0 count. Lindsay chases it up high. Foul tip into the glove for strike one, one and one. Michigan up seven to one, but trying to keep that gaudy lead intact with two on and one out. Hannah Adams waiting on deck. This is the nine hitter, Lindsay, and then we'll flip to the top. One, one count, right down Main Street. One and two. Nice pitch there by Sirocco, nothing fancy, just getting hers. Stepping back into the circle now and complete control, one, two count for Sirocco. Trying to put away the hitter, Lindsay, who struck out swinging last time up. One, two coming, swing and a miss. Chased way, way in front of that off speed, down to 53, one of the slowest pitches we've seen all day. Now two outs in the frame, flip to the top, Hannah Adams comes up, and this is a big at back because you do not want two runners on when Lindemann comes back to the plate. No, absolutely. Infield back to their normal depths here as there's two outs, looking for the easiest play. First pitch to Adams, dives just a little off the plate, down and outside. Adams today one for two, single to lead off the game in the bottom of the first. Then flew out to centers, hit a couple balls decently hard. Have to be careful here. The wind up, the 1-0, floats high, 2-0. You know, like you said, though, Alex, if I'm Michigan here, I really want to get out of this inning before we have to face Lindemann with runners on base. Looks like Elizabeth Hightower down in the Florida bullpen warming up. Michigan doesn't have anybody warming up. Obian threw quite a bit early on in the game. Looked like just routine warm-ups, though. 2-0 coming. And that one a little high, 3-0. Storaco is not missing by much, but she's missing by just enough. And now, with her back to the wall, has got to pitch out of this hole. 3-0 and the count. The wind up and the pitch is a called strike. She's been very comfortable at coming back with a 3-0 count and finding the zone. But now 3-1, and one, this is where you don't want to make a mistake. Adams, not much of a power hitter. Three home runs last season was all for the everyday starter. Started 67 games for the Gators, but she did have 13 doubles. 3-1 coming, that one up high, and now the bases are loaded. This is a dangerous situation here if you're Michigan. Don't and want to give Lindemann anything to hit. Jen Brundage goes out there, and she's going to talk to Alex Duraco and try to calm her on down here in the bottom of the fourth. That one at 66. Duraco's not wearing down at all, but she did throw around 100 and 20-ish pitches yesterday. Yeah, if I'm a Florida fan here, I'm almost giddy with excitement. Yeah, this is your situation to claw back in the game if you are a Florida. Base is loaded, your best hitter at the plate. Yeah, coming off in that bat where she hit an absolute shot for a solo home run. You know that's got to be sitting in the back of Alex Sirocco's mind right now, but a great pitcher most likely won't let that phase her. She's going to go right at Lindemann. And now the whole infield meets in the middle and they'll have a conversation. Straco get ready to go to work. Lindemann flew out to left and hit a solo home run in this game. 330 hit her a year ago. Interesting thing about Lindemann is she had more home runs than she had doubles or triples combined last season. We've definitely seen, ooh, called strike there on the first pitch, looked a little high. That's a good break there for Straco, getting ahead early. 0-1 count, she's missed high a lot early in at bats in this game, but gets the benefit of a generous call from Liz Hammerschmidt. 0-1 on the way, off speed, 
Called strike on the outer edge. Froze Lindemann 0-2. Real delayed call there from behind the plate for a called strike two. Straco's in complete control here. 0-2 oh, the count. 0-2 oh, count, I think you go back to the fastball, but keep it low and away. Don't give Lindemann anything she can drive, and definitely don't leave off speed over the plate. 0-2 oh, coming, swinging a high pop-up, but that will arc out of play. And it's in these kinds of situations that you really have to have faith in your pitcher. Carol Hutchins sticking with her. Now over 80 pitches for Alex Duraco. 0 oh and 2 to the count. She takes a long sigh, winds up. The pitch swinging a fly ball to center field. This one well hit. Hogan Rod going back to the track to the wall. Makes the catch. I don't think it was going to get over, but Haley played it perfectly. And she makes the grab. Gators leave them loaded. And Michigan takes a six run lead to the fifth. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if that one was going to get over that hit from Lindemann, but Hogan Rod hanging on the wall to catch that one. That's a huge break for Michigan. If she misses that one, that one bounces off the wall. That's at least two, if not three, runs scoring. Huge break for Storocco and the Wolverines. Gators get a hit, two walks, leave them loaded, and Michigan leads 7-1 to the fifth. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Not easy there for Alex Storocco, but she wiggles out of it, and you can see this Gator... Offense, they're really playing aggressively. They want to battle back in this game. Couldn't quite get the break. They had it loaded with their best hitter at the plate. But Storaco has pitched in some high stress situations over her Michigan career already. That one, one of the most high stress, but she got through it and now Michigan leads 7 1 to the fifth. Michigan has a chance to end this one early. The run rule is eight runs after five innings. Currently up by six here with their last at bat before that, before that marker hits. So we'll see if they can put up two. Yeah, and that's you know a, a big incentive here for Michigan. Put two on the board, and now all of a sudden Alex Duraco is only three outs away from the win. You'd love to save her pitch count, reserve Bobian. Because you still got another game to play after this one. I mean, this is the game that you come to this tournament to play against. Such a great Gators team that has haunted Michigan over the years. But you can't forget about that team that's out in the outfield. To exactly. focus on this one, but you do have to keep that in mind. Exactly. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change for the Florida Gators. Looks like it's going to be number 56, the lefty. Katie Cronister, who did not pitch much at all last season. A 2.03 ERA looks very nice, but extremely small sample size. Just 10 and a third innings of work. High whip. 13 hits and four walks in those 10 and a third innings. Didn't pitch in a lot of high stress situations last year. And so Farley's day is done after three innings of work allows two runs. She did a pretty good job to keep Florida in this game when it could have really flown out of hand. Both teams have now left the bases loaded at one point or another. And Michigan will go out there with their number nine hitter at the plate, Natalia Rodriguez. In the top of the fifth here in sunny Tampa, Florida, approaching the 4.30 hour here on the Eastern time zone. Matt Rod takes ball one down and in from Cronister. Rodriguez, a switch hitter batting right-handed this at bat. Looking to swing instead of the usual slap against the lefty Cronister. Takes that one in the dirt, 2-0. and oh. See if Cronister pitched in the game this afternoon. She did not. Trilasek and Hightower pitched the first six innings of that game, and then Lugo came in for the save. So we have now seen, or rather Florida has now seen every pitcher on their roster today. Rodriguez taps that one foul, 2-1. and one. Going deep into the bullpen is Tim Walton. And you talk about how this Florida team has changed in the offseason. This is where it really hurts to not have a Kelly Barnhill, not just because she was one of the best pitchers in the country, but just uncertainty in the bullpen and tearing through pitchers here on this afternoon. Rodriguez takes a ball inside, 3-1 and one now. No, absolutely. Florida's really gone to their entire lineup here. They've gone through their entire bullpen. Everybody's been getting work. 
And that's what the playing these tournaments put stress on you. You have to navigate things. 3-1 coming, strike on the inner edge. But that's why teams play it in these sort of tournament formats early in the year is because when you get into the regional, super regionals, college world series, you do play two games in a in a day on some occasions and you have to take into account load management. 3-2 coming and Rodriguez hits this one, looping and it'll drop fair down the third base side. She cruises in with a bloop single and Michigan has the leadoff runner on. Off the bat, that one looked like it was gonna go foul, but did stay in play. Just inside, about half a foot inside that right, or right inside of that third baseline, sorry. And now we'll flip to the top. Lexi Blair to the plate, 0 for 2 with a walk today. Lexi's hit some balls hard, two flyouts that were pretty deep. Lexi checks in, lefty hitter against the lefty Chronister, and she takes that one a little outside. And the Michigan dugout continues to lead the chance. And you can just feel how deflated the crowd that first base side for Florida is. They thought they had their moment to get back in the game. Down and away 2-0. and oh. Yeah, the Florida dugout as well. They're just kind of hanging on the banister over the front of the dugout. No chance or cheers coming from them. Whereas Michigan has been full of energy all game. Seems like they've just wanted this one more. 2-0 count. The wind up. The pitch, Lexi clobbers this one into right field, but will go right at Bufano, who backs up and makes the play. She's now flown out to every player in the outfield. One to left, one to center, and one to right. One out in the top of the fifth, bringing up Julia Menez. Menez is the only player in Michigan's order not to reach base yet today. 0 for 3, ground out to second, fly out to center, and a pop out in foul ground to first, and now we're gonna have a pitching change. They're gonna bring in Elizabeth Hightower. Chronister will head out. She just picked up two batters, and now they'll bring in a new pitcher. Hightower pitched this afternoon. She came in in relief of Trilisek. Three innings, two hits, two walks, four strikeouts, one run allowed, pretty solid outing. And the righty, the black ponytail, and the sunflower in the hair. It's ready to warm on up. Yeah, this next section of Michigan's lineup has been hot the past couple days. That's probably why Florida's making that pitching change. They want to avoid this run rule if they can. They have one runner on base. The leading run coming up to the plate. So Florida's going to look to cut that, obviously. And as they warm up, when I continue to thank everyone for joining us here on WCBN Sports. We got great listenership yesterday, continue to do so today. We always love to hear from you where you're listening from, and also if you are in attendance, come on over to the Donaldson deck at some point and say hi. We ran into Jason Bobian. and I'm not sure if that is Megan's father or if it's just someone related to her, but he said hi to us on the concourse, and you met Maddie Uden's mother yesterday while I was on lunch break. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody who's come up and said hi has just been extremely nice and just extremely welcoming. We want to thank you again for that. Like we said, if you are in Tampa this weekend, feel free to stop by the Donaldson deck. So Juju steps in, runner on first, one out in the inning. First pitch, it's a little inside, one and oh. The American flag out in right field, just barely waving a little bit of a breeze, but not much wind at all today. Rodriguez on first, and Hightower staring over there into the dugout, gets the sign. 1-0 on the way, Jimenez chops it foul and it rolls up against the Michigan dugout. Chandler Dennis watches Carla Eccles come up and pick it up, a number four, watching a number four right there. Hightower gets the softball back. Last season, Hightower pitched quite a bit more than Chronister did, 61 and two thirds innings, a 2-1-6 ERA, she's pretty solid. 1-1, Jimenez way out in front of that one and she hits it foul as it loops out of the stadium. Count one and two. That's the second ball today that she's hit super deep to left field that's just gone foul. Hightower had a whip of just over one. Hitters were 229 against her. One, two pitch, grounded over to short. They're gonna try to turn two. There's one, relay to first, and it is in time. 
A 6-4-3 double play, Reynoso turns it, and that's the downside of hitting a ball pretty hard, is that it gives the opportunity to turn the two outs, and that will do it for the top of the fifth. It looks like we're going to end up playing seven. Has Michigan unable to capitalize on that run rule, but... They'll get one more chance in the top of the sixth, but right now it's just back to Storacco. She got through a stressful inning there in the bottom of the fourth, and now you'd just love to see a much quicker inning here. Take that stress off. She does have to face Eccles, Roberts, and Bufano, 3-4-5, but you know, just work through more smoothly. She's at 87 pitches for the game. You definitely think she's got enough in the tank to go two more innings at least. You may have a scenario where you might have to bring in Bobian for the seventh, but we'll see how Storacco is able to work through it. Alex today, four innings pitched, five hits, three walks, one run allowed, five strikeouts, pretty darn good. And any time you are in command with a six-run lead headed to the bottom of the fifth against a top ten team, you will take that every day of the week. Soft, or baseball team, rather, is not out there today. They had their inner team scrimmage yesterday going on, as we were calling. Yep. Michigan baseball now just six days away from returning to action. They will play their season opener next Friday against Vanderbilt. That will be at the MLB Four Tournament in Scottsdale, Arizona. WCBN Sports will be there, notably me, but we will have games against Arizona State, Vanderbilt, and Cal Poly next weekend in Arizona as Michigan baseball will kick off their season. Back to the softball action. Storacco steps on the rubber. She'll face Eccles to lead things off in the fifth. Eccles has reached base twice. One of only two Gators to do that today. She takes the first pitch a little high. 1-0. Storacco has really struggled with the first pitch strikes today. Yeah, she, might have, she may be struggling with the first pitch strikes today, but she has been very consistent later when she is in a disadvantage in the count. 1-0, swinging a fly ball to right. This one well hit, and it is gone. Carla Eccles, a solo home run. Second solo home run of the day for Florida, and the Gators make it 7-2. The Eccles got her inside fastball and turned on that one. Again, both Florida now up to two runs. Both have come on solo shots, one from Lindemann, one now from Eccles. And now the infield will meet together. They'll talk it over. Straco's now surrendered three runs on the season, all of them solo home runs. So that issue with the long ball has continued for Straco this season. Something she's going to have to work through as Jordan Roberts now steps up to the plate. First pitch off speed floats in for a called strike. Roberts today 0 for 2 with a strikeout swinging and a line out to second. The wind up, and that pitch swung on and missed. Roberts swinging to hit a home run of her own right there. Didn't connect 0 and 2. I guess Ford is just thinking that's the only way he can score right <laughs> yeah. now. Both their runs, as I said, have come off of solo shots. Straco spins the ball in the right hand. 0-2 on the way, that one tap just foul. Another off-balance swing there. I don't know if that swing right there was quite home run worthy. That foul ball barely making it over to the on-deck circle. Mia Bufano, the on-deck circle. No outs in the inning. Another solo homer on the board, 7-2 game. 0-2 pitch, swing and a foul back. And that one back over the concourse out of the stadium. Somebody might have a souvenir after that one. 0-2 oh, count. The wind up, the pitch, swinging a fly ball to right. This one well hit. Backing up is Thais Gonzalez, but she'll make the play right at the edge of the warning track. Florida are starting to hit a, a few balls a little bit harder, but that goes for one out, and now you know, every out is big. That's what you have to have to care about. Yeah, absolutely. Sirocco getting through the meat of Florida's order, getting past those big hitters like Lindemann and Eccles, moving their way down into the weaker parts of the bottom. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter. They're reinserting Jordan Matthews 
into the game for Buffano. Matthews today 0 for 2. Had been taken out as a defensive replacement for Buffano, but the rules softball hour to be reinserted. So number 99 back out there. First pitch floats up high, 1 and 0. Straco's now allowed six hits, two runs on six hits, only two extra base hits, those two homers. All either singles or long balls. 1-0 count. That one swung on and fouled. Corkscrew arcing towards us. Bounces off the netting. Taylor Bump retrieves it and fires it back to the hurler. Storaco, 7-2 Michigan, one out, bottom of the fifth. Top 20 matchup between the 17th ranked Wolverines and 7th ranked Gators. 1-1 one, one coming, foul back, 1-2. and two. Straco staying confident in her fastball. Love to see that. A lot of pitchers, you know, both of those home runs have come off of fastballs. A lot of pitchers will start to shy away from that, but not Straco. She's coming right back at everybody with it. 1-2 and two the count. Checks the wristband. It's on that left wrist right below the glove. 1-2 coming. Swing and just getting a piece was Jordan Matthews nubbing it back to the screen. You could tell she was not seeing that off-speed pitch well at all right there. And the spin-heavy deliveries of Storaco throwing Matthews off. See if she can get another big out here in this bottom of the fifth. Michigan crowd always a little tense every time Florida comes to the plate. Been protecting a lead all game long. 1-2 on the way, swinging a... Pop up into shallow left field. Backing up is Natalia Rodriguez. She makes the play. Two gone. And yeah, nice play there by Rodriguez. Just turn it, opening up her hips and running back to grab that one. Don't want to backpedal on those. Rodriguez, like I said, made the right play. And now that brings up Bailey Goddard. 0 for 1 today with a walk and a strikeout swinging back in the second. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth. So 7 to 2. Wind up, the pitch is a little high. Alex gets it right back from Carson, and as she always does, she walks straight back in a line towards the edge of the circle, then stops, turns around, and then walks right back onto the rubber. 1-0 on the way, off speed, called strike. And she's retreated to that same spot of the circle so much that the white line yeah, you can for see the circle. her exact path yeah. every time. Yeah, there's a line of footprints from the rubber back to it, and then that spot where she stops, the chalk is completely gone. She's stepped on it so many times. 1-1 one, one count. Pitch right there, down the pipe for a called strike, one and two. Now one strike away from working through this bottom of the fifth. Yeah, if I'm Sirocco, I just stick with that fastball here, go right back at her. She is now past... Pitch number 100 on the game. One and two the count on the number six hitter, Goddard. The pitch, Goddard strike three on the edge. Liz Hammerschmidt fires up the lawnmower and Storaco gives up a solo homer to Eccles, but she works through it and we've seen that resiliency from Alex today as Michigan leads 7-2 headed to the top of the sixth. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Great pitch there by Storaco going back to that fastball on the outside corner. She knew Goddard had struggled with that today, went right back, taking advantage of it. And that, you know, that's the thing that's been with Storaco all along since she was a freshman last season, that metal, that ability to shake things off. She's given up some big home runs this weekend, but she just keeps on pitching through it. Michigan now six outs away from a huge top 10 victory as Elizabeth Hightower will go back out there for another inning of work from the Monticello, Florida native. Michigan will have three, four, five out there. If they can tack on two more and Storaco can get a scoreless inning, you can end it in six. Eight runs always applies and for the run rule in six innings, but Michigan's been held off the board now two innings in a row. They got five in the first, two in the third. Well, I mean, if there's anybody you want starting your rally, it's going to be Lou Allen. She's been red hot all weekend. Look to continue that over right as, as well, coming up second. As we start the top of the sixth, the game recap, Michigan got five in the first, all with two outs on a rally that started by this hitter right here, Lou Allen. 
They put two more on in the third. Florida's committed three errors. Michigan has placed pressure on the defense. Florida defense has cracked at that. Michigan seven runs on nine hits. Florida's gotten two runs back and a pair of solo homers, one from Lindemann and one from Eccles as Allen takes a ball low. Starter for Florida, Natalie Lugo chased out after just one inning. Danny Farley went three. They went to Hightower last inning, and she's out there right now. Allen swings and fouls this one right at Hutch. She gets out of the way, and Eccles goes over to pick it up. The Gators' closest opportunity to working back in this game. They had the bases loaded with two outs for the dangerous Kendall Lindemann in the bottom of the fourth, and Lindemann flew out to the wall where Haley Hoganrod, Michigan center fielder, tracked it down, and we sit at 7-2 to two right now in the top of the sixth. 1-1 one, one count on Lou Allen. Lou swings, hits this one deep to center field on the run. Watching it, it will be gone over the right center field fence. Lou Allen tucks that one over the flag, hanging over that right center wall, and she comes around the Lou chance from the Michigan crowd, and it's 8-2 to two Wolverines, second homer of the weekend for Lou Allen. She's two for three on the game. That piece of hitting is just an absolute display of power. She took that outside pitch and drove it over the right center gap, like you said, 220 feet over there. What a piece of hitting by Lou Allen, and great start to this Michigan hopeful rally. Eight to two, Michigan now on top. They get one back and restore that six run lead. Pitch a little high there from high tower. As Morgan Overrightis digs in. And the more runs chant from the Michigan dugout. That's now the 10th hit of the game for the Wolverines. Eight runs on 10 hits, no errors committed. Florida two runs on six hits, three errors committed. Both teams have left seven on as there's a called strike one and one. Yeah, that's just a testament to Michigan's defense. Been solid the past two days. Zero errors in this game so far. Six called strike in. on the outer edge. And the defense today especially jarring in the manner that Florida has really struggled in their end, and Michigan has remained completely stout. One, two, pop up, but it'll get out of play. And no play bigger than Haley Hoganrod at the wall. It's been the difference in this one so far. Michigan's hitters have been aggressive, been aggressive on the base path, clean in the field. Storocco has done enough, and the Wolverines lead by six in the top of the six. Still nobody out in this inning. One, two coming over right as strokes this one to left field. That one's deep to the wall. It'll drop off the base of the wall. Morgan will cruise into second with a sliding double and back-to-back -back extra base hits from the three, four hitters and the Wolverines in this top of the sixth. That rail is looking more and more pretty as we get going here. Lou Allen started off with that home run and now a double from over right as the Wolverines are hot coming into this sixth inning. And now that'll bring Taylor Bump to the plate. Couple walks today, 0 for 1 is Taylor. And now somebody's got a cowbell down there and doing the Go Blue chant with the Michigan crowd. Wolverine fans mostly situated on the third base side and up here on the Donaldson deck where it's almost uniformly Wolverine fans. Bump fouls the first pitch back, 0-1. Whereas the Gator fans all on the first base side and out in right field. Beyond the fence on that grassy hill yeah, the Gator fans don't look too happy with all these Michigan cheers going on. <laughs> Taylor Bump steps back in. USF Bulls have been warming up for a long time. They have now deserted that bullpen as Bump pops another one up looking for a potential play. It was Roberts the catcher, and instead of land the mesh netting and drop back down into her glove, she throws it back, and ahead in the count 0-2 is Elizabeth Hightower, runner on second, nobody out, eight to two, Michigan on top. Over Florida, here on a Saturday mid-afternoon matchup. Bump out in front of that one and she taps it foul. Goes down the third base side. The left fielder Hoover will pick it up. Jamie Hoover has been inserted into this game. Senior from Suwannee, Georgia. She has come into left field for Cheyenne Lindsay. Good adjustment there by Bump to waste that one. She was way out in front expecting fastball, kept her composure, kept her balance, and followed it off to avoid the strikeout. 0-2 count, the wind up, the pitch outside. One and two the count. You just feel the energy of the Michigan players. They have felt in command of this game from the very beginning. Michigan has scored in the first inning of all three games. 
this weekend. The USF Rawlings tournament bump out in front of that one, and she loops it foul out of the stadium, bounces off the pavement, and a young fan, the blue T-shirt. Michigan fan. Yeah, chases after it. Shout one, out to that guy. One and two, the count. Carol Hutchins wearing the visor down there, a third base coach. Bump hits this one, same spot, just pulls it her direction. She's still way out in front of these pitches from Hightower, but again, Bump continues to battle and stay alive. Yeah, Bump really grinding up the pitch count on this one. We've seen some really nice at-bats from Taylor Bump this weekend. She's looking to finally connect and get a big hit. One, two count. Checks her swing, but it's in the dirt. They appeal down to Mike Burwell at first and pretty clearly did not go around there, two and two. Yeah, I mean, you're going to check if you're the catcher, but bump wasn't even close. Checking the wristband. Hightower, the windup, 2-2 two -two again, and bump pops this one up yet again, but same spot. Down that left field line and in to foul ground, bouncing off the pavement again, and that same fan down there in the Michigan shirt will pick up another one. That little guy's having a day going after these foul balls. Taylor Bump, be a good babysitter, giving that young fan something to do. She strokes this one same direction, and it'll get <laughs> into the bushes. Didn't quite get to him this time. But Taylor Bump. Bump's going for the record here. <laughs> two and two the count, and now Liz Hammerschmidt had to go over to the Florida dugout and pick up some new softballs because they're losing them really quickly. High tower steps back on the rubber. This is a long battle. Two and two the count. Overright is still down there at second. To wind up, the pitch in the dirt bounces in, and it will get away from Roberts. Going on down to third is Overright, and she's now one bag away from scoring Michigan's ninth run of the ball game. Now three and two the count on Taylor Bump. Taylor Bump really working the pitch count here. Great at bat. Hightower hasn't been in for long, but she has thrown a lot of pitches. 3-2, full count on the way. Bump swings, hits this one deep to left field. Backing up is Hoover to the track, to the wall. No ball. It is gone! Taylor Bump hits it out, and Michigan now leads 10-2. And they are now in the run rule threshold. Will be three outs away from the victory in the bottom of the sixth. But they can still keep putting more on. That's the second homer of the inning for the Wolverines. What an at-bat by Taylor Bump. Works at you know, 10 to 12 pitch at-bat and then absolutely tanks that full count pitch. She was driving the ball deep down that uh, left side the entire time, hit about four or five foul balls in a row over towards that young fan in the Michigan shirt and then finally gets a ball over the plate, something she can do something with and absolutely launches it. And now still no outs in this top of the sixth. Michigan three extra base hits a row. Homer, double homer to start this sixth inning. Now 10 runs on 12 hits for Michigan. Two runs on six hits for the Gators. The wind up, the first pitch is high to Hannah Carson. Michigan can just keep pouring it on here in this sixth inning. Yeah, I just want to highlight no outs. Yep. Now standing in the left-handed batter's box is Hannah Carson. 1-0 coming. She takes a strike on the inner edge. Hannah today, one for three. Single scored a run. Fielder's choice and a pop-up to short. That single scored the first runs of the games for Michigan way back in that first inning. And the good swings have not stopped yet for this Michigan offense. Ball outside, two and one. Michigan firing on all cylinders here in this game on the offensive end and the defensive side. Like we said, no errors on the defensive side. And 10 runs on 12 hits. Hightower winds up 2-1. Carson cuts and misses 2-2. Two and two. It'll be 7-8-9 for Florida in the bottom of the sixth. Caraway, Reynoso, and Hoover. Michigan answered Florida's call. The only area this game Florida was better in was the hitting home runs column. And now that's gone away as Carson strokes this one deep to right field, but it will arc foul. That one had home run distance, but goes foul. That's the third time we've seen that today from Wolverine launching a ball foul. 
Like you said, has the distance but didn't stay in the foul poles. Two and two, the count. Hightower winds up. Carson checks her swing, but it was a strike anyway. That is the first out of the frame at backwards K for Hightower. Now that'll bring up Haley Hoganrod to the plate. Haley's two for three, and you have to think right now she's in line to be the player of the game, either her or Lou Allen. But I think the defense of Hoganrod in that situation tips the scale right now. First pitch up high because it's you know, hard to think right now how this game might have been different if she can't run that ball down up against the wall in the fourth inning. Yeah, exactly. That's a tough ball to catch. It Like we said, it might not have gotten over, but if that ball bounces off the wall, that's at least two, if not three, runs scored for the Florida Gators, and they're right back in this game. Haley pounds one foul, one and one. Just took a seat for the first time today, and the sun is right in our face here on the Donaldson deck. <laughs> not conducive to sitting right now. The setting, setting sun here in Tampa, Florida. Three runs across in this top of the sixth. Wind up the pitch. Haley lays down a bunt. I think it went off her foot. They're going to throw down, and it gets away. Yeah, now Mike Burwell finally calls that ball foul. That's a good call from Burwell because Hammerschmidt, I guess, just did not see it. Yeah, the Florida fans erupted after that one. It was pretty obvious that it hit her foot in the or coming right out of the batter's box. Michigan almost caught a break there as Florida threw it into the outfield, but... Yeah, so they we'll go back and have to reset. They made a play at first base when there was nobody there, and it rolled into the outfield. But good call made down there at first base by Mike Burwell, and they'll even at one and one. Now Tim Walton comes out to talk to Hammerschmidt as Hightower talks with her infield. Count should be actually one and two. It was one and one before that play. And if it's ruled foul, it should be one and two. Scoreboard is not updated yet. Hoganrod, the senior from West Michigan, steps back in the batter's box. They finally adjust the scoreboard. One, two coming. Down and in, two and two. Haley kicks her feet in the batter's box, producing a small billow of dirt. Now cocks the bat over her right shoulder, waits for the payoff pitch. Oh boy, got her in the knee, and she is wincing in pain. Hightower just lost control of that one. And Haley will go down, go on down to first base. Yeah, she's going to shake that one off. Walking herself down there on her own power, that's a good thing to see. Now like that'll... Highlight, we do have a substitution here. We're going to have a pinch hitter for Thais Gonzalez. Looks like it's going to be number 12, Lauren Esmond. Yep, Lauren Esmond. Part of that heralded Michigan freshman class. We've only really seen Julia Menez so far this weekend as Hogan runs talking with Mike Burwell trying to make sure she can stay in the game, and she does. We've seen Audrey LeClaire pinch run a little bit. We have not seen Esmond yet. She steps in. Esmond is a both a pitcher and a utility player. And she'll get her first at bat as a Michigan Wolverine from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hit a lot of home runs in Michigan high school softball. Gets her first crack at it. Takes the first pitch for a called strike on the inner edge. Yeah, you have to imagine, Esmond's just going to be taking her cuts, swinging for the fences here. Why not? You have the opportunity, no harm, no foul. You have a runner on base, and you're up by eight. Wind up, first pitch. That one, a little down. Sorry, second pitch, now it counts one and one. Michigan leads 10-2. There'll be three outs away from the win in the bottom of the sixth. Trying to put more on the board. Runner on and one out. Esman waves and misses there, one and two. Esman, a lefty hitter and a lefty thrower. Gives Michigan two lefty pitchers in theory and three righty pitchers on the roster. One, two to Esman is up high. You have... Storaco, Dennis, and Schaefer in the righty column, and then Bobian and Esman in the lefty column. Schaefer unavailable with a hand injury for about the first month of the season. Haven't seen Dennis yet. Have to think we'll get a chance sometime in the next two games after this one. 2-2, two -two, Esman loops it into left field. It will drop foul. Yeah, you heard the Michigan bench collectively hold their breath on that one. 
Hoping to see Espen rack up her first hit as a Wolverine. Not going to happen on that pitch. Hopefully coming up, though. 2-2 two -two count. Hightower has really had to work. Michigan has made the Florida pitchers throw a lot of pitches today. Every at-bat, a battle. 2-2, two -two Esman pokes this one, and it will go right to second. Adams picks it up, sidearm flip for the out. Runner moves up to second, two outs in the inning. Productive yes. out. Yeah, absolutely. Esman might not have gotten on base there, but she did her job, moved her runner over into scoring position. That sets it up for number 21. Error Rodriguez will not. Back up. I do not believe it will be Natalia Rodriguez. She's running over to the dugout. Unless she's just changing bats, we might have a pinch hitter, and we will. Abby Skvars is going to come in and pinch hit. For the Wolverines, she had an RBI single. Pinch hitter extraordinary a year ago. This is a good opportunity for her to get some cuts, try to give Michigan an insurance run before they go to close it out. On our East of the Rockies, Season three finale episode. Our old friend WCBN contributor Kevin Klein predicted 2020 would be the year of the Skvars. And Abby's one for one on the season, so he might have had something in mind there. Now an opportunity for her to go to two for two on the campaign. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Skvars is listed as the backup catcher behind Hannah Carson. Probably won't get a ton of opportunities there given how good Carson has been already this season. Skvars now a senior for the Wolverines, but you think about last year where Alex Subjek, and then Skvars hits that one deep to center field. It will get over the head of the center fielder, Caraway. Run, run will score. She's headed to second, double. and she'll be stopped there. 11 to two, Michigan on top. They just crush that one. Skvars puts it over the head of Caraway, and the Wolverines just keep on hitting. 11 runs now on 13 hits. Yeah, just showing off the power there. Driving that ball opposite field into the left center gap. One hop in the warning track. Now they'll bring that rod back in. And the Michigan bench applauding Abby Skvars. She's now two for two on the young campaign. And now Lexi Blair will come on up with the runner on second. 11 to two game now. Hightower has now surrendered four here in the top of the sixth. First pitch to Blair is a called strike. Two outs in the inning. Blair today without a hit, 0 for 3 and a walk, trying to change that and add another run on the board with the speed of Rodriguez. She scores on anything in the outfield. 0-1, ball outside. I tell you what, though, Michigan's top two hitters, Blair and Jimenez, are 0 for 7 on the day combined. But they've both just been pounding the ball, hitting it hard. They've been hitting it right two people, and Florida's been making nice plays. 1-1 one, one count. The wind up, the pitch. Blair takes it down and away. And you just look at this Michigan lineup, how relentless they've been all day long. Have not taken any innings off. And Florida's pitching staff, maybe not what it was last year without Kelly Barnhill, but they've been punished today. Lexi takes a called strike, two and two. Oh, absolutely. Michigan's lineup just all the way through has been solid. The bottom of the order's been producing all day long. I mean, look at the seven seven and nine hitters, Hoganrod and Rodriguez, they both have two hits on the day. Meanwhile, Florida hasn't been able to get that same production out of the bottom of their lineup. Two and two pitch is down and away. Now the count runs full, three and two. Hightower now approaching 50 pitches. And you think about how many that Farley had to throw, how many Lugo threw in just one inning alone. Michigan's seen a lot of pitches today. Three, two coming, Blair loops this one in the infield and Reynoso comes on, makes the play. But Michigan carries a nine run lead to the bottom of the sixth and they are now three outs away from closing this one out and getting a monumental early season win. Yeah, absolutely. A win over a very solid number seven ranked Florida team would be huge for the Wolverines. Straco heads back out there, puts the mask on. Taylor Bump hands her the, the softball. 11 runs on 13 hits, no errors for Michigan. Two runs on six hits, three errors for Florida. And you look at who's coming up. Caraway, Reynoso, and Hoover. 
This is an opportunity for Starocko to close the game out without ever having to see Lindemann or Eccles again. Yeah, and that'd be a sigh of relief for the Michigan Wolverines there. You look at Florida in total, they've put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players on base. But six of those nine, the one, two, three hitters, pretty much exactly what we thought coming into this game has held true. The top of the order dangerous, the rest pretty feeble, and it'll be the bottom of the order trying to keep the Gators alive here at the USF Softball Stadium. The USF Rawlings Invitational. I want to thank everyone for listening here on WCBN Sports. This has been a lot of fun here today. Michigan playing really well, and we'll have the next game against USF about 30 minutes after this one. The Bulls are down in the Florida bullpen, all lined up in a row watching, probably cheering, I would guess, for Michigan because they want to get out there and finally play. They've been standing around all day long. Yeah, absolutely. They've been, all the games have been delayed so far after that first Florida game. And they've got two games to play here tonight. USF is going to be a long night. Yeah, they're going to be here until like 3 in the morning. <laughs> and I think we might have a pinch hitter to start off this inning. It looks like we will. As Tim Walton talking, this looks like it'll be E.C. Taylor pinch hitting for Carraway. Number 24, a freshman, Taylor from Marion, Arkansas. And it also looks like there's another pinch hitter on deck. That looks like Bryn Thomas, number 46, who is in the spot of Sofia Reynoso. So Walton pulling out all the stops right now. Try to find something to change the way this game has been going. As Storaco skips one in, she enters the sixth with 102 pitches, and you do think she can get a quick inning here. She can close this game out on her own. And then she'd hand the ball to Bobian and, and Dennis for the late game. Yeah, for sure. I think that's going to be the plan for Storaco here. 1-0 called strike at the knees. E.C. Taylor is a slap hitter. Taylor Bump walking inside the bag at third. Infield pulled in with the slapper. She's holding her glove up, trying to block out the sun. 1-1 one, one coming, fouled back to the screen, 1-2. 62 miles an hour there from Alex. The fastest I saw today was 67 from her. Yeah, that was in the early earnings, though. She's got to be tired out by now. That's why the miles per hour are dropping off. But still, hitting her spots. Got enough in the tank to finish this one out. Takes a sigh, winds up, delivers the one-two here. It's fouled back. Taylor doing a good job of just making contact right now. Storaco throws the ball up in the air, catches it in her right hand. Goes back to deliver another two-strike offering to the pinch hitter, Taylor. The wind-up, the pitch, way out in front of it and taps it foul. Straco gets the ball thrown back to her from Lou Allen. Michigan put up five in the first, two in the third, four in the sixth to lead 11 to two. Florida's put up solo shots in the third and the fifth. That's it. One, two count. Wind up the pitch way high, two and two. Yeah, Michigan's defense has been stellar so far in this game. Like I said, both of Florida's runs, the defense couldn't really do anything about it both shots came off home runs. She steps off and Hannah Carson is trying to see the signs from Jen Brundage and is having trouble with the shadows. Brundage holding up her clipboard trying to block out the sun herself. 2-2 two -two coming, swing and a pop-up, arcing towards us, rolls off the netting and then bounces on down in a basket grab by Taylor Bump. Tim Walton clapping a couple times, encouraged by his young freshman hitter staying alive here against the Michigan hurler. Storaco wipes the ball as she shakes it in her hand against the pant leg. 2-2 one more time. The pitch popped up in the air. Carson tracking it, and she makes the grab on a small looping foul pop-up. One out. Impressive at bat, though, by the freshman. That at bat seemed to go on forever. She just fouled off pitch after pitch. And that'll bring up 
Pinch hitter Bryn Thomas. The bench being emptied by Florida. First pitch right down the pipe for strike one. That was an eight pitch at bats. Durango now up to 110. Hoover on deck. It's a complete change of this normal 7 8 9. Caraway, Reynoso, and Lindsay all removed for different players here in the sixth. Thomas swings and pops this one up in the infield. Taylor Bump coming over, battling the shadows as she makes the play. Two outs. Sirocco just one out away now from closing this one out. And now Jamie Hoover, the last call for the Gators. Jamie Hoover, pretty surprising not starting today. She started a lot of games last year for this Florida team. Actually gets to cut here and takes a pitch high. Hoover last season started 57 of their 67 games, 243 hitter, hit seven home runs. 344 on base, 432 slugging, not a bad player in the least. 1-0 coming. Called strike on the outer edge, one and one. The Georgia State Panthers have arrived in the outfield. They will play USF, I believe, after the Michigan USF games. They've got a lot of waiting to do here tonight. Yeah, they've got a long time. One, one count. Storocco winds up, delivers. Hoover checked her swing, and she went around, says Mike Burwell down there at first. And now Storocco, one strike away. This would be huge for Michigan. 11-2, they lead over Florida. The Michigan bench on their feet, clapping. Strocco spins the ball. On their feet clapping yeah. As well. The wind up, the one two, little high, two and two. Michigan's been coming to this Tampa tournament for a while, and they have not had a lot of success against the Gators. They lost eight nothing in a run rule to Florida back in that great 2016 season, trying to return the favor with a run rule here today. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and Alex Storocco screams and jumps up and down as she hugs Hannah Carson. A complete team effort today as Michigan run rules the Florida Gators 11-2. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Not something we expected coming into this tournament. You know, on Easter Rockies the other day, we said Florida was going to be the team to beat in this tournament. It was expected to be a hard-fought game but a run rule from the Michigan Wolverines coming in here. They played some really good softball here today. We're going to continue that in this next game against USF. Clicked on all cylinders, offense, defense, and six innings of two-run ball from Alex Storocco, allowing just six hits, a couple solo homers to some great hitters, but otherwise she navigated her way through, and Michigan got it done here today. And with that, we will sign off. Once again, final score, Michigan 11, Florida 2, Stay on our YouTube channel. We'll have another broadcast link up in about 30 minutes when Michigan takes on USF. One more time, Michigan 11, Florida 2. We'll be back in a bit.